ওইটা কপি করে ওবিসি দিন স্যার এখান থেকে কপি করে হয়েছে হয়েছে গো লাইভ হয়ে গেছে ও হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে বলে করে দিন বাস নাও স্টার্ট অর নাও স্টার্ট প্লিজ কেশব স্যার আমার কাজ শেষ रेकर्डिंग কেশব স্যার বলতে পারবেন প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার আসবেন কিনা না না সরি রিপোর্ট হ্যাজ অলরেডি জয়েন ওকে ওকে দ্যাটস না দ্যাটস ওকে রিসোর্স পারসন হ্যাজ অলরেডি জয়েন সো উই মাস্ট স্টার্ট आवर সেশন নাও ওকে টেকিং পারমিশন फ्रॉम প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার ক্যান স্টার্ট স্যার বলছি রেকর্ডটা কি আমি স্টার্ট করব করে দেব অফ কোর্স ওকে ওকে ইউনিভার্সিটিজ এন্ড কলেজেস my dear colleagues and co-workers and most of all and above all dear students who are the most efficient participants presented over here and in the youtube streaming too once again i would like to hearty welcome to you all in the afternoon of the virtual world of education to listen to learn to know and think about our environment our own geography disaster conservation restoration and livelihood with the holding the hands of two eminent resource persons presented here today and their lecture series it's an honor and a pleasure to us for uh, to have such renowned research scholars academicians renowned scholars and uh, resource persons between us thank you sir thank you so much for sharing your valuable time to make us enlightened so with these words like all other day let's begin our journey to explore some new ideas with the hope and expectation that you all may enjoy the sessions a lot so now i would like to request and invite our respected patron of the lecture series and our Uh, principal sir of kuch bihar college dr pankaj kumar devnath to inaugurate the program with his speech welcome sir and over to you thank you sonal so very good afternoon to all of you present here at the outset i would like to convey sincere thanks and gratitude from my part and also on behalf of all the stakeholders of Kuch Bihar College to Professor Vishwambar Prasad Soti who is presently working in Mizoram University who will deliver this special lecture on a very important topic on sustainable livelihood approach in connection with poverty reduction in mizoram and we have with us dr kunal kumar das who is retired scientist engaged in a uh, India Space Research Organization Dehradun he will also speak on a 
different topic related to geospatial world, earth observation and evolving trends. So this is uh, really a great opportunity for all of us, especially for the students of geography and allied subjects, to hear from both of you, which are very renowned academician and research scholars in your own field. I hope students and all of the participants of this special lecture will be benefited so much from your lecture sets. So the students of our college and who are present here we will be getting an opportunity uh, for the exposure and to interact with some of the renowned academician in the related field of geography in this special lecture. I want to thank the uh, HOD of Department of Geography, Professor Keshav Mandal, the PG coordinator, Dr. Tapan Kumar Das, and all other faculty members of Department of Geography, both UG, PG, and Geoinformatics, to organize such lecture series for the students of our college and for the other participants also. So this type of initiative which have been take, taken from the part of the different departments of our college is to enrich especially for the students during this pandemic situation. And to me, this is the uh, benefit of online teaching learning methods also. So, Taking the advantage of this online platform, we are trying to reach to the students of our college for the betterment of their knowledge and for their future also. I hope today's lecture, which will be delivered by these two important resource persons will be a very, very successful one. Again, I would like to convey sincere thanks to both of you, sir, Professor Shoti and Professor Das. And uh, over to uh, Mrs. Sonel. Thank you, sir. So, as usual, we are uh, we have your inspiring words, and uh, thank you once again for uh, sparing your time with your, with us in spite of your busy schedule, and we are always grateful to your appreciation. So now, let us start our uh, discussion session or the special lecture session. And before that, I would take a few minutes and take the honor to introduce to all our esteemed speaker of the first session, whose name is more than enough as his introduction. Professor Biswambar Prasad Sati, one of the renowned geographer of Northeast India, as well as India, is known for his researches on mountains and his contributions in the field of physical geography, as well as geospatial science. He is presently associated with Mizoram University as professor 
in the Department of Geography and and continuing his contribution as a lifelong researcher by supervising the research scholars, publishing articles in several national and international journals, books, and many more. He achieved his PhD degree in the year 1992 from Garwal University, and then further, he was awarded the delete from Jivaji University of Madhya Pradesh. Not only that, he has made several visits in different countries of the world, participated in different seminars, or, uh, organized, and also have organized them in national and international level. He is too much active in the web world by his academic contributions also. We feel fortunate enough today to spend with time with you, sir, and share your knowledge with us. And on behalf of the whole geography department of Kojbihar College, on being my sincere regards to you, I would like to invite you to take up the session for your lecture on the topic, Sustainable Livelihood Approach on Poverty Reduction in Mizoram. So over to you, Satisha. Please unmute yourself and deliver the lecture. Thank you so much, Madam, for giving my this very huge introduction. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Honorable uh, Principal uh, Dr. Pankaj Devnath. I cannot because my camera is not working. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, Honorable Principal Dr. Dev Nadji, uh, HOD uh, Dr. Kesav Mondal, uh, and his team, uh, Madam Sonel Song, uh, my faculty members, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. This gives me an immense pleasure, and also it is my privilege to present here with uh, my research finding. And uh, uh, I am very much thankful of the organizers, the principal and also uh, the head of department of Kush Bihar College, West Bengal, for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to disseminate information, whatever I have on uh, natural resources management for sustainable livelihood in major. So now I will go for uh, this uh, sharing my presentation. It is uh, not coming, just wait. So is it visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay, so thank you so much. So today I am uh, presenting my work on sustainable livelihood approach to poverty reduction uh, in uh, Mizoram, in Himalaya with special reference to Mizoram. Maybe the title has some problem there. Anyway, so I will just stop on these uh, points, these outlines, and they are just, I will define what is sustainable livelihoods, and then I will talk on objectives of the study. Then I will talk on the study area, methodology. Sustainable livelihood approach concept is one of the very, very important uh, thing that I, will, I would like to uh, describe it. And also, I will talk on the major livelihood assets and capitals in terms of Majoram, Northeast India. 
And then we will go for landscape vulnerability and institutional supports. We will talk on the chronic poverty and poverty reduction in uh, Mizoram. And then there will be a last paragraph on conclusion and suggestions. So when we define sustainable livelihood is uh, largely depends on availability of livelihood assets, capitals. And these assets and capitals are like natural capitals, human capitals, financial capitals, physical capitals, and social capital and their optimum use. And they are well known. Everybody knows worldwide those are uh, working on sustainable livelihood. All these assets and capitals are very, very important for, uh, you know, that uh, enhancing and sustaining livelihood all over the world. It can be defined as increased well-being, reduced vulnerability, improved food security, and more sustainable use of natural resources. So all these livelihood assets are depending on how to use them. So there may be use, there may be misuse, there may be underuse also so at this way. And they are actually for the well-being of the human being All when we use them sustainably. And then there is also vulnerable vulnerability con contest, that is shocks, trends, and seasonality, and institutional and policy contest. And they are very, very important aspects for livelihood strategies. A sustainable livelihood is a situation where all these aspects are controlled and they have a greater potential to future livelihood sustainability. So, uh, this, this we can define the livelihood like this. And this present object, the objective of this present presentation will be that the main objective uh, is uh, to examine the food security status, major driving forces affecting it, and to assess the major livelihood approaches to poverty reduction in Majoram. It also assesses the awareness natural resources and raise questions that how we can utilize available natural resources for economic sustainability and well-being of society. And then the last one is that this study further investigates the various approaches to livelihood enhancement through the best agriculture practices, best use of agroclimate and landscape, optimum use of timber and non-timber forest products, and ample use of available water resources. So if you see this map, because we are the students of geography and without map, our any work is incomplete. So if you see the horizontal extension of the Himalaya, one thing that I want to uh, let you know that very important uh, point is that uh, generally for the Northeast India, we call it Eastern Himalaya, but it is not actually the Eastern Himalaya. Eastern Himalaya includes only the two states of Sikkim and Anunchal Pradesh because they have the greater Himalaya, the mighty Himalaya, the snow-clad mountain ranges. And rest of the part of the Eastern India is called the Eastern Extension of the Himalaya. They may be resembling with the, uh, the Siwalik Hills or also the, the Middle Himalaya or Lesser Himalaya. Rather, they are not also Siwalik Hills because Siwalik Hills are formed due to the debris eroded from the greater Himalaya and deposited here. So Siwalik Hills always found on the major Himalayan regions where snow-clad mountain peaks are found. So we call it Eastern Extension of the Himalaya. This is now newly, uh, we have, because all uh, in our all literature or all the institutions of India, they call it Eastern Himalaya. So, so we, we don't want to call it Eastern because it has different, um, uh, you know, that ge this um, geographical uh, aspects than the, these Himalaya because it does not have the greater Himalaya, which is snow clad. So we nomenclature it as the Eastern extension of Himalaya. This is for your kind information. And here I'm talking about this uh, study area. This map is uh, neatly drawn. And here you can see the red circles, they are the selected villages. And Mizoram, you know, uh, but maybe better than me because it was earlier part, part of Assam. 
and then it has become independent state in uh, 1987. And if you see, it has eight uh, uh, districts. I have shown here, but now Mizoram has 11 districts. They have added three more districts there. And the Mizoram is geo-strategically located, uh, located, and it is very important point. And when we talk about the look east or act east, act east, Mizoram has very, very important role. So that we will emphasize today uh, how to use these all natural, all the assets the Mizoram has. And it is not only for Mizoram state, but it has national importance. Because Myanmar and Bangladesh covers, it's uh, about 60% uh, the border area and rest is Manipura, Assam, and Tripura. That way, it is very. Sorry, sir. I, I interrupt yes. you. Sorry, sir. Yes. Sir, actually, slide is not moving or changing. Um, is there any problem or uh, you just. Uh, uh, this is the first Achha, slide. I, okay. Acha, you did not see it. Uh, no, only, only the first, first slide is visible. Maybe there is first some problem. So, so now oh, it yes, is sir. coming. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, now it is that, okay. Yeah, okay, because I, do, I, I should not make it full screen. So uh, if I make it full screen, it may not be visible. Okay, so I will make it okay, only sir. half screen. Okay, so I was talking about this, uh, the map horizontal extension of Himalaya that I have described. And the circle shows the Northeast India and I have defined this already. So next, I think now it is visible. Is it? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, okay. So what we did actually, we have selected 16 villages from a district. It means that two villages from each district and then we gather data, primary data from all villages through sample, uh, uh, through sampling, random, purposive random sampling and total uh, sample size was about, uh, was 1527. And then we got all the, um, you know, that the data in terms of these capitals and we analyze and then I'm showing before you. So when we just, I would like to give you some, uh, the, uh, the, you know, that background notes and then we will go for the main theme. So uh, uh, first of all, when we talk about the landforms of Mizoram, you can see here, Mizoram has very different type, different uh, topography and uh, I think most of you people have visited Mizoram during 2017, yes, we, when we have a international conference there. So if you see the, uh, these uh, landforms, Mizoram has very high structural hills, more medium structural hills, low structural hills, they have valley fields, flood plains, and some linear ridges are there. And if you see the um, that the highest percentage is uh, obtained by low structure hills, that is 61.7%, and then medium structure. So all the hill hills or uh, the hill areas of Mizoram are called structured hill. And then also they all are calling also called also rolling hills. Mizoram has some flood plains where the people, they cultivate wet rice cultivation. And otherwise, only you, if you see the flood plains, it is only 0.4%. And valley fields also 2.7%. It means that only about 3.1% of the total area of the Mizoram is, and rest of this 96% uh, this, uh, is all mountainous or hilly region. That is also the characteristics of, and the elevation also, if you see, the elevation is more than uh, uh, 1,200 also. And there is one Phong Phui mountain, which is located in the southern part of Mizoram, uh, border with Myanmar in Seya district, has uh, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, 2,300 uh, 2, meters. That is also a blue mountain, it is called. So that way, if you come to Mizoram, and you will see that there are lots of uh, landscapes, uh, very beautiful landscapes, spectacular landscapes, and you can enjoy. So when, because for, uh, when we talk about sustainable livelihood, we need this uh, socioeconomic indicators also. So if you see the area of Mizoram, it is only 21,081 square kilometer. This is very, very important to see that in a very small area Mizoram has. But out of this, 
out of this mizoram about 86% forest land that is very important also very because the, the the forest resources are very abundant and if we use and they are also very economically viable and they have high diversity and then also mizoram is one of the uh, eco, eco, biodiversity hotspot global biodiversity hotspot so that way it is very important to note down here but when you see the uh, zone area means the cultivated area it is only 5.5% and on the other hand on the other hand about more than 50% of the people of mizoram are dependent on uh, on agriculture on farming but output is also very low area is very low therefore when we just will talk about the food security or food insecurity you will found that that graph is very high in mizoram so uh, this uh, human development index in uh, mizoram is little bit higher than india it is 0.57 because one of the reason of this is that mizoram has the sec is the second highest literate literate state in india after kerala so that is one of the reason and here you, you can see that people below poverty line is 20% 20.7% as a whole but when you see the rural areas it is 37% because and then because mizoram actually when you talk urban rural population mizoram has about uh, 58% 48% uh, population living in urban areas only 52% living in rural areas and then if you see the rural areas uh, this uh, people living poverty line 37 it is one of the highest per capita income is also very low when you see uttarakhand i know uttarakhand has more than 1 lakh rupees uh, per capita income but mizoram has only 29% so that is very critical situation for food security but one another important thing is that environmental sustainability index it is always cal calculated in percentile so it is 80 to 100 some areas there is no zero pollution and because some aizol and some um, lunglai these are the major cities maybe some uh, there may be some pollution in the cities because number of vehicles increasing otherwise mizoram is one of the ideal states of india in terms of the environmental sustainability index and when you you, you see the environmental sustainability index of kuch bihar you will find that lots of difference so that point that is the point also because this environmental sustainability index is also one of the important asset for mizoram in terms of health or in terms of development of tourism we will talk on this we will come on this issue in this time to come and then when we talk about per capita land it is higher than uh, india because mizoram has only 52 uh, percent people living in um, uh, per square kilometer 52 percent so that way it is very very important and also when we talk about per capita forest land it is 0.017 very higher than the national average and also from the other states so that way so these are the assets the land and forest and environment these are actually and, and uh, these are actually the important assets for sustainable livelihood so what we did in i'm just talking about methodology what we did is that we did a, an empirical study selected 16 villages two villages from each district total eight 76% household we surveyed total number of surveyed household 1527 that i already told you it was purposive random sampling method descriptive state and z square method we have utilized and then we categorized villages according to food security status and then we analyzed them so these are the 16 villages you can see and also they are uh, the total population and surveyed household so you can see here total 76% of the total households of these villages we have surveyed yeah this is very very important graph and this is used actually the uh, worldwide all the scholars they use it and that is called the sustainable livelihood approach concept and that i made it in terms of mizoram state so now these slides are visible for everyone
Yes, but it cannot be real. Yes, sir, slide is visible. Okay, okay, because it, I cannot expand it. Okay, when sir, I expand, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So this, these are actually, if you see this, if you see this model, you will find here in terms of Mizoram, when we talk about natural capital, so abundant land, water, forest, when we talk about human capital, there is very high literacy, but education level is uh, not higher. So one thing we have to take into account when we are talking about sustainable livelihood, literacy and education is very different. Thing. So if you see the education level very less, maybe less than um, West Bengal, or when we talk about literacy, it is very high because educational institutions are very, very scanty in Mizoram. So that way. But it is increasing now. And then also the Mizoram people, one of the characteristics of Mizoram people is uh, that they have higher expenditure than income. And because government support is very high in terms of monetary or other uh, uh, support, so they have lots of resources coming from the central government. They are, uh, this is result from our study. I will just talk later on. Because for, for a um, li sustainable livelihood approach, we have to we have to uh, uh, analyze the expenditure and income, and then we can say that whether it is sustainable or not. So they have less income, higher expenditure, but because government of India support is there, so they enjoy. And uh, financial means they have poor infrastructure. They have very other supports also, medium uh, institutional facilities are not good also like this. And in social capital, actually, when you talk about social capital, Mizoram is one of the ideal state because they have all socialization. They help to their community and this and this. And NGOs are working every, any, every calamity or every adverse situation. All the people, they help to each other. So that way, the social capital is very strong there. And then... Uh, Private sector means NGO's role is very greater in terms of institutional sub, uh, system, institutional development. But when we we we, we see the uh, institution, government institutions, they are very scanty, very poor. And then also in terms of natural vulnerability, it is very high. Landscape is very fragile. Landslides are very common. Eight months, there is rainfall from uh, April to uh, rather March to the to November, heavy rainfall occurs, and because the landscape is very fragile of all the and the rock, this uh, actually the rock uh, formation is sedimentary, therefore landslides are and then that's why the livelihood sustainability is really a very very crucial situation. They uh, create their crucial situation. So now. A livelihood sustainability in Mizoram depends on sustainable use of natural and human capitals because uh, uh, natural capital are huge, abundant, that I told you. And then development of physical and financial capital that government has to support them. Actually, the state government, the central government provide them lots of financial support, but for the other purposes, not because if you see the road conditions very poor, the, uh, the communication sometimes during uh, monsoon season, you cannot go from one place to another place because of the road quality and uh, availability also. So like this, all these things, and then I will proceed. So here, uh, this is the livelihood capitals as a natural capital. So if you see the forest resources, the first figure, if you see, that is all very dense bamboo forest. And there are more than 200 bamboo species. And uh, it is unused. And during this uh, January and February, they fire it because they use it for shifting cultivation. They clear these forests and make them for ready for shifting cultivation. But their economic viability is very huge. Bamboo, very important resources in all point of view because also from domestic to the commercial. But because of the uh, 
uh, you know, that remoteness, uh, backwardness, economic uh, underdevelopment, these, these bamboo forests are not utilized. Recently, what the government did is that the second uh, uh, picture you can see that uh, this is sal, this is a sal forest, teak forest, economically highly va uh, valuable. But uh, these are not uh, sustainable for the ecosystem of Mizoram because sal for this teak forest generally grow in the warmer region uh, in tropical climate. And they are growing in these hills. They are these forests are giving lots of money to them, but in terms of the climate, therefore, lots of climatic changes in Mizoram taking place during the last times, during the past few decades. And then here you see that in this natural capital, if you see the shifting cultivation, you might have known about shifting cultivation more. Um, um, most of you people, uh, this uh, you, both picture you can see. What they do is that they they in in January and February they cut forest and then in uh, March April April May they they sow the seeds and then they harvest and this I will show you one model there also. So shifting cultivation is very popular and because agricultural land is very less, it is only four point five. Out of it, more than fifty percent is under shifting cultivation. So, uh, and it is their cultural, uh, actually, uh, cultural and social uh, importance. Uh, uh, it is shifting cultivation as social and cultural importance. So they all are indulged. So it is their way of life, actually. If you see that shifting cultivation is way of life of Mizoram. But nowadays, it, it has been decreased. It is decreasing because several causes, several driving forces. And then you see that they have they have zingar is grown largely there, uh, and other many many the wild uh, products, and uh, they because they don't have market so uh, generally it is not used but they they sell it on the roadside or they go to the family to family uh, they contact and lots of vegetables grow in these shifting uh, zonelands only during monsoon period. And one important thing is that they all are very, very, means that uh, organic farming. So they are very nutri uh, nutritious. They have high nutritional value. These all products are. Uh, and uh, banana is one of the important crop grow in uh, Mizoram. And uh, it is very sweet because they don't use any um, chemicals to uh, ripe uh, banana. It is, uh, it is, you know, it is, it ripens in the um, forest area only. Very sweet also, high quality. But the only the problem is that how to make it uh, sustainable. They have to think because only domestic use are there. Though Mizoram is one of the highly producer of banana, but uh, in terms of commercialization, it is very less. But another picture, you see one lady, she is drying some tobacco. And Mizoram has one of the characteristics that uh, Mizoram, they are very much, uh, you know, that uh, um, they smoke too much. And that's why, because this uh, tobacco they produce in their farmland, in Jhum land also in permanent land. And that's why in India, the highest Death from uh, this uh, cancer is uh, from Mizoram. So that is one of the important. On the one hand, Mizoram is second little uh, state in India, state of India. But on the other hand, uh, the, the, the cancer patients are the highest in Mizoram from India. So that is, and the, the, this is, uh, government also does not do anything against all this. And then you see here, their shifting cultivation is actually very, very peculiar system. So these, it is called Zoom cultivation. And those uh, farmers, they cultivate the shifting cultivation is called Zoomiyaj. So here you, Zoomiyaj are very, uh, no, very healthy people, very healthy. And they work very hard also. So in this space, this slope is very high in this first figure, you can see, very high slope. And they are just working with the agriculture. And one very important uh, production is there. 
that is called squash or also it is scut it is very good vegetable for uh, stomach maybe it is not uh, uh, sold out or it is not grown in the mainland of india mizoram has abundant but it does not have any market and you see that these um, uh, this uh, the production is ready to sell here so but but because of all these things they are not able to um, sell them and then all these are domesticated means they use for domestic consumption this i want to show you most of you i i, I don't know you know shifting cultivation this uh, or not this is zoom cycle and this figure is developed by me so if you see the cyclic nature of shifting cultivation and simplification i don't know it is visible for you or not because of this screen when i make it full screen you cannot so you cannot see the slides so then i make it small so what they did is december january they clear forest and february and march they burn it it is called burning and lashing and this is this make this creates environmental degradation problem april and may they sow the seeds and har har they this october and november they harvest crop so it is economic socio economic development and then they kept it follow fellow the land the zoom land kept it uh, kept they kept it fellow and then earlier it was uh, 20 to 25 years they they do not grow anything on that land but now the cycle has been reduced to 3 to 5 years and that it is also in that land because they kept it for uh, fellow for 20 to 25 years then there is regeneration of forest in this area but now it is reduced and this this is also the reduction of the cycle of zoom cultivation is also cause for the decrease in area production and productivity of crops coming out from the shifting cultivation and i just observed this uh, field for one year completely i observed this field and you can also understand if you see the first picture in that area they cut the forest this was very dense forest area they cut it and then other uh, this figure if you see they burn it so burning means it is also causing for uh, air pollution because lots of uh, the carbon being emitting to the atmosphere and then third one is you see is one zumia is growing something seedling there sowing seeds and then fourth is the production is only four five pumpkins there were a family is only one Uh, the zoom land and four members means often they work here some weekly they are coming here and working with the field though they did not uh, invest any money on this uh, field but they spend lots of hours working with this field and finally they got the they got uh, four or five pumpkins out of the total one year this uh, practice they did cutting of forest also though they it is their labor but if you calculate this labor also it is more than 20000 rupees they invest if you calculate their labor but output is very very low and they are not bothered with output also so we are talking about the livelihood sustainability this is again another issue of thinking so we have some data from the uh, remote sensing and we have di digitalized this data we have this 2011 and 2015 data on this uh, uh, agriculture there are zoom lens there are uh, current zoom lens there are abundant zoom lens and also there are some permanent agriculture field also so you see in both the figure i don't know whether you can see or not but if i um, analyze this so in 2000 anyone yes yeah yes i can understand
सर 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 आई नो आई नो अच्छा अच्छा दिस वन ओके ओके आई गॉट योर पॉइंट ओके यू आर यू वॉन्ट लाइक या यू वॉन्ट लाइक दिस ओके 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो इफ यू सी दैट दिस मैप ऑल्सो द डेंसिटी ऑफ दिस करेंट जोम लैंड एग्रीकल्चर लैंड एंड the abandoned homeland is very less in 2015 though the period is only 4 years and one important thing is uh, i want to tell you that the land degradation what happened that earlier in the jhum land after keeping it fellow for 20 to 25 years there were regeneration of forest but now what happened i don't know all these abandoned jhum lands have become the wasteland because no forest is there that that's why we call it land degradation or environmental degradation so most of the cases though mizoram has 86% area under uh, uh, forest but these patches also those patches are uh, degradable or uh, they they are environmentally degradable uh, they also include under the forest land actually they are not really the forest land so this is the situation and um, and that kind of land is uh, increasing that waste land increasing in major so that is one of the very important and because their uh, occupation is agriculture and that will be will have a future uh, problem so uh, when we uh, conducted this study uh in all these villages what we did is that we we interviewed the people about this number 815 people we uh, uh in, we interviewed and we asked them their perception regarding implications of septic cultivation so our first question was is septic septic cultivation economically viable the answer was no it is not economically viable therefore septic cultivation has decreased by 50% during the last 3 decades and respondent were 95% the second question was what are the major hurdles for practicing septic cultivation 95% respondent replied that inaccessibility rugged and rough terrain in fertile soil high slope gradient distance of jhup plots from the rural settlement is very very high it is long way to go third question was what are the implications of septic cultivation so they told that it degrades environment erode the upper layer of soil and deplete forest and that's why the rate of soil erosion is, soil erosion is very high and during the monsoon season when the rivers are inundated over flooded the the they they brought they they brought the this sediments and they um, uh, deposited either in the kachar region of assam or either in bangladesh or myanmar so then the soil fertility is very less in mizoram because rainfall is very high also that's why these are the 90% people they replied like this and then another question was if the septic cultivation is not sustainable then why are the jhumians practicing it these were another question so they replied that because they do not have any other livelihood options land under wet rice cultivation so one thing is very important to understand wet rice cultivation and septic cultivation they are two types of cultivation and very different types of cultivation practice in mizoram wet rice cultivation is practiced in valley fields and uh, flat plains in few areas and septic cultivation is practiced all in the slopey area hilly area so land under wet rice cultivation and kitchen garden is very less some some uh, land is there some pro small proportion of land is devoted for kitchen garden so very less the septic cultivation is a part of their culture and practicing septic cultivation is their way of life so that is one of the important point the jhumia are still practicing septic cultivation even they 
the, they have very less the, the production output from shifting cultivation is decreasing. So 88% respondent replied on this. And then can permanent agriculture replace shifting cultivation through terracing slopey land? Actually, in 1985, the government of Mizoram in, introduced new land use policy. And where they decided that all the zoom lands should be given permanently to the zoomias, and they, they will make them terraced as the terraced cultivation is practiced in Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. So same way they wanted, but that scheme was not uh, successful because in government system, lots of problems were there. So what they replied, 88% people replied that terracing slopey land is expensive. Further, many zoom plots are inaccessible. If the government pro uh, provides financial assistance to connect the plots by terracing slopey land, it may be one of the suitable uh, economic activities. So most of the Jumias, they want that government support and they can convert the support in terms of, because the Zoom lands are not uh, owned by the Jumias. Only for one or two years, maximum two years, the Zoom lands are allotted to Jumias. So that is not their permanent land. So Jumia is demanding that if uh, the, they give permanent land to them, and they also give financial, they support financially, then they can make them the terrorist one. So here you can see that uh, now the shifting cultivation plot I have shown you. And the first, first one is that uh, this is permanent agriculture and dairy farming. One of the very, very important, uh, you know, that uh, driver, which can change the economy of Mizoram. So here, the first picture, you see that how now there are some areas in Aizol and some other districts also, they are terracing this uh, support, uh, this slopey land, and then they are cultivating crops there. You can see both of them. And then because uh, Mizoram climate is one of the very, very, you know, um, you cannot unique climate. So in, within India also, you cannot get this type of climate because Himalayan region is very cold during the winter because of snowfall. But Mizoram, during winter, it is very uh, sunny and you can enjoy the sun. And during summer, it is because uh, eight months it is rain, so temperature decrease even minus 10 degree during May. And you need to wear a warm cloth because of this, uh, because of cold. So the people, and then all these factors, uh, if you see the, and then diversity is very high in terms of forest or in terms of also the agro, agro uh, ecology or agro climate is very, very suitable in Mizoram that way. But it depends on the local people and the government, how to use these, uh, this, this actually, this capital, this capital, the climate as one of the important capitals for development. So here I am showing you another capital, all this natural and agriculture capital I have shown you. And here I am showing you the human capital, that is the population. Mainly human capital is population and also this you know, trained people, skilled people. Skilled people also come under the um, this uh, uh, human capital. So population is only 1.2 million major. It is only about 10 lakh, 10.2 10 lakh. So very small proportion of population. Literacy is 92%. Education is average to high, not good education. That we have to think about. If we establish more educational institutions and give impart a very quality education or a skilled education to people, then the population, this uh, the human capital may be increased. And also agriculture work at 60% people working in agriculture. And skill level only 15%. That's why in terms of also human capital, Mizoram is average to low. And here, very important photograph. You can see, I think you might have seen some people. This is physical capital, food storage and kitchen. So if you see here, if you see this figure, number one figure, uh, they have this hot, uh, bamboo hut, and inside the hut, you see one, uh, this, uh, you see this one, uh, they made one, uh, 
this container type where they are putting the rice, the rice coming from shifting cultivation inside there. They made it. So this shows the poor condition of the people. And here one old lady cooking this bamboo shoot, one of the very famous food for Mizoj, bamboo shoot rice, and they also eat this pork, this important food there. So very use the traditional kitchen, but now inside, if you see the very small one, you cannot see this. There are some families having gas also, gas stove, but very few. So mostly the firewood they use for cooking and heating their houses. And then bamboo and bamboo product, I have shown you one, uh, one uh, photo, the very dense bamboo forest. And out of the total 86% of the forest area in Mizoram, about, um, about more than 50% area is under bamboo. So though they have bamboo, some bamboo product, and if you visit uh, Aizol, you, you will find some beautiful bamboo products for decorating or for other agriculture uh, purposes or for giving for as a gift purposes also. So the, the people they do it as a, there is no like such like village industry and they do it uh, domestically for their own purposes. And then other uh, this uh, forest products also. So non-timber forest products also very, very uh, abundant. And also there are also fruits. Uh, the uh, wild fruits. So most of the mizos are dependent on the non-timber forest products. Uh, this is Iron Smith. Uh, he's uh, just uh, in a one village making some tools, agriculture tools. They are very poor people. But Mizoram has one important thing that they have this weaving, weaving, so craft. So if you go to Aizwal city, you will find very good, good cloth and different types of the gift items you can find. And these are a small scale weaving industries they made, but very beautifully. And that can be enhanced for sustainable livelihood. That is my point. Here, uh, you see bamboo suit in first picture, bamboo suit, and uh, they enjoy. It is a very, really good also. The bamboo suit food is very good. And people, second, uh, the figure people, they are drying their, uh, this, uh, product of agri agriculture product, this is rice. And in, traditionally they make this, like you see one lady, maybe very small for you, one lady grinding some rice for some cooking some item. So not, they don't have this uh, chaki, chaki means the uh, flour, um, wheat flour machine, and they are just doing this um, manually. So this is in most of the areas they do it. And still in Mizoram, you will be very surprised. Still in Mizoram, the transportation is done by this, this uh, waterways. Because villages are not connecting. And during monsoon season, it is very difficult to move from one place. So they, there are two, three major rivers like Kaladon, like Turiel, like Tolong. So they make this uh, transportation uh, by um, this, by river water. And they have this small, small boats. And also inside, in, inside also, if you see that these are the all natural springs. So water is available for drinking from these springs. But during the four months of dry season, during winter, water scarcity prevails, prevails because there is no natural springs dry during this time. And then we have uh, this some uh, exercise. We have some exercise here. We have this... Uh, income and uh, people involvement and income share. If you see here, so agriculture 31.3% people uh, involved and they have income only 0 0.4. So that is very, very important. Though in agriculture involvement score is first, they are first, but in income coming from agriculture, the seventh. But here you see another government services the people involved only 6.3% and the income is 69.7% uh, and they score one. So that is very important to see. So the people, they don't want, they, because why shifting cultivation is decreasing, one of the reason is that the salary coming from the private and public sector jobs and output from agriculture is very less. 
population is also increasing. These are all. And even from animal husbandry, people involved only 21.7%, but they have ranked two, and the, the income is 8.5% of the total. It means that they, there is scope of animal husbandry. Milk can milk product, they can make and they can sell. This, um, depending upon, provided the market facilities. And in terms of agriculture, you see, uh, because mijos are known for very, very, you know, this uh, fashion, they are very fashionable. So out of the total income, 29.2% income is for clothing. And health also, because the health condition in Mizoram is very poor, and also medicinal facilities, this medical facilities is very less also. So health, they spend 14.4%, food community 13.1%, and traveling also. So Mizoram, they don't want to go outside of their state. They are very conservative in this way. Conservative means they like their um, land. But uh, uh, but uh, traveling within the Mizoram is their very, very important uh, activity. And they spend lots of money on this. So when we see, you see the income level, per capita income group, a number of households. So highest number is the people having per capita income 500 to 10,000 per month and the percentage is 33.4%. It means that 33.4% people earning 5,000, 10,000 rupees per month. And more than 20%, uh, only 38% people, they have. It means that the number of people are very poor. And this, this actually what I'm showing is not government data. This data we gathered from the um, 16 uh, uh, villages of uh, all districts of Mizoram. And then we have this also one, uh, did one thing we have uh, did this uh, exercise. We, because this is large scale, so I am finding little bit, but no problem. Yeah, no, I'll show you. Yes, so food security components and indicators. So we analyze food security. We use several technologies. Tandul, Tandul, Tandulkar committee report we use because there is a, some methodology how to how to um, how to measure food security. So that way we measure it. And uh, there are food security co components. They are very important components: food availability, food accessibility, and food stability. So food availability is. Uh, means the indicators are food production, persons, NM, kg per capita, day availability of rice, and per capita livestock. So in this way, food production is 44.5% mean value, and per capita per day availability is 1.5, and per capita livestock is 1.4. Food accessibility means road condition, 33.4% mean value, means it's still very poor. And number of men workers, 42.1% mean value. And number of fair shops is only one. Means one village has one fair of shops. Means that public service, public distribution system. So every village has one, one fair shop. And food stability means that irrigated land, it is only 15.9% in all villages, this mean value. And self-sufficiency in food step, except rice percentage of household, it is only, you see that 5.4% households have sufficiency, food sufficiency, self-sufficiency. Otherwise, other, uh, all other people are have uh, this uh, efficiency in uh, food sufficiency. And then also this, um, what do you call this? Uh, self-sufficiency in rice, because rice is the main staple food. All measures they like rice, eat rice. So it is 12.2%. And household not dependent on fear shop, 12.9. Fear shop means they have sufficient uh, uh, food production. So they are not buying anything from the public distribution system. And food stock more than five months. Only 7.4% people have mean value, have the food stocks, they can make it more than five months. 
and that literacy in these villages, literacy is little lower, 70.6, because Mizoram as a whole, it is 90.2%, uh, uh, because Mizoram has about 50% people living in urban areas, that may be one of the cause. And then when we see the index level, there are few villages, uh, they have uh, very high uh, level of this uh, food security. Uh, they are only one, two, three. You see that uh, very high, only three villages, high, only three villages, medium, only one village. And if you see the food security, the low and very low level, there are many villages. So it is more than uh, this uh, eight, nine villages, they have uh, 10 villages, they have uh, food insecurity situation prevailing. That is all. also this, we have done some analysis. So, so vulnerability contest and institutional support that app, as I have already uh, explained that slope gradient is very high, fragility is ecologically, it is very fragile, landslides are very frequent, and in the valley areas and flood regions, flash, flash floods are very frequent also. So this is very, very important contest for livelihood strategy. Bijoram is very, very vulnerable even to climate change phenomena. And uh, they have less government supports from state, particularly from state, central government has something to provide them. And this is landslides uh, on 8, 4th June 2018. You can see this uh, situation prevails in the entire um, state of Mizoram. Huge rainfall and lots of landslides prevail, even the houses. So many uh, settlements are located in the vulnerable areas. And poverty, you can see that picture in the rural areas. Uh, and here, if you see that uh, table, uh, uh, from our study, from 16 villages, 1,027 households, people living below poverty line, 33.7. Chronic poverty, it is more than people living below poverty line. So chronic poverty is 17.6%. And when you just plus them, you merge them two figures, it is 51.3% people living under poverty and chronic poverty. So that is very, very important issue to think about it. So this is something policy uh, measures, policy frameworks, how we can, what we can do is that in terms of sustainable use of natural capital, what we can do for Mizoram is that Mizoram has very ideal location for generation of hydroelectricity power projects. And there are many perennial rivers and they have very good ideal locations. So what we can do is that micro hydro power electricity uh, projects we can uh, construct and then because Mizoram has all electricity supply from outside the state. So that we can. Tourism is one of the very important uh, capital and because Mizoram has very peaceful society, one of the most peaceful states of India, climatic condition is so good, then tourism development can be, uh, can be made. Optimum use of forest products and conversion of cash crops because agroecological climate, climate for cultivating all cash crops is very feasible there. In terms of development of human capital, quality and job-oriented education we can give because we need, because higher education institutions are very scanty and we can enhance them, we can increase them. So augmentation of employment only then we, when we have quality of institutions. And then physical capital also, development of infrastructure facilities, transportation facilities can be given at the national level now. Road transportation is becoming very popular in India. Quality of roads are becoming very emerging, largely in a good way. Adequate irrigation can be can be done can be done only in the valley fields and 
flash floods because the uh, the slopes are very fragile. And then also many villages in Mizoram does not have electricity. And if electricity is there, it is uh, not uh, for 24 hours. A few, uh, seldom it is coming. And then institutional development. These are the capital, uh, physical capitals. We can uh, we can develop this financial uh, capital. Uh, what we can do is so socio-economic development. In terms of the socio-economic development, can be carried out, and government support is very, very important in this way. And uh, social cooperation, social capital, social cooperation is very, very uh, strengthening and also very developed in Mizoram because community participation is very high. So even in the villages, many villages in Mizoram, they got the, the prize from India as the best and clean uh, villages of India, one of the best and clean villages of India. It is only due to the community participation. They have all uh, clean roads, clean sewer lines, and every, they, 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 it is not during this um, Swachh Bharat campaign, but before that, they have very good uh, this kind of practice. Community participation and social uh, cooperation is very high there. And then I have some suggestions because uh, yeah, still time is there, but anyway. I have some suggestions how to um, how to make livelihood sustainable in Mizoram. So one of the important thing is that it is not from my side also. It is from my side, but it is also government's initiative that settled for agriculture. Because land tenure is very, tenure system is not there. So people, they don't own their agriculture. So land can be given to them. And if they they make the agriculture permanently because if, if if the land is not your, you will not have much affection. So you will not give um, your time and uh, your time to to that agriculture field. But if it is allotted to you, it is your land. Then what you can do is that you can give more time. You can uh, you can because it is not for one and two years, but it is for life long then you can get a good agriculture products. And one important thing is everywhere in India now, maybe in uh, um, West Bengal, I don't have much idea. Selection of crops according to their suitability. So suitability index is very, very needful at the present of time because the land is also limited. Earlier we have lots of land, so it was not a major issue. And there are climatic changes also taking place. So that way we have to we have to select the crops. Which crop can be grown in which area? The slopey area, the plain area, because land is now limited. And there are some um, geo um, hydrological changes that way. The third one is value addition. That I have just shown you and I have explained that Mizoram has, you see jackfruits. They have forest, wild forest and they don't use it. Pineapple largely grown. Banana. Mizoram is now one of the emerging orange growing state. They have lychee. And because that is not uh, sold out the seasonal and they don't have storage also, so sometimes they are unused. So if we make them some value addition, so banana chips or some juice, some squares, pineapple, and kothal, uh, this, this jackfruit, we can make pickles. These are some small, small, through small scale industries. So that we can, we can sell them outside of the mainland, within mainland and outside. That way value addition is very, very important thing. Food processing industries, a small level, can be established in each village. So when is their fruits and vegetable growing season, they can, value add, and then they can make product. And during off season, it can be sold out. So that will be one of the important suggestions for them. A small scale 
forest based industries at village level that is very very like bamboo they have they have but we need it to commercialize so that the income more income and more employment can be generated so a small scale forest based means as i told you they have bamboo forest other uh, non timber forest they have this uh, handlooms clothing like this they can make uh, they are very important and they are very good also workers they are article very good also tourism development i told you one of the proverb for mizoram is that you visit mizoram for one week you will get one week uh, more span of your life you go for one month you are life will increase one month because that oh healthy climate and then another thing is that you stress your lungs all the because all the patients those are patient those are this uh, uh, what do you call this uh, asthmatic patient they 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 used to go to aizor and they come with uh, full recovery because of the climate and that already i told you the development of micro hydro power projects and uh, this i would like to stop here and these are there are some publications some very good publications also scopus index publications out of the work we have done because i have only about 8 years in mizoram i joined in 2012 so we have some work. this is one of the book a sustainable livelihood approach to poverty reduction published by springer another book is economic and ecological implication of shifting cultivation in mizoram that is also published by these are author book both not uh, edited book so author book by me and my student and uh, i thank you very much for your patience kindly listening me and giving me this chance to present my work before you thank you very much Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, is it audible now? So, okay. Sorry for for the inconvenience, and uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, so it it was really a very nice presentation and uh, very nice uh, and many things to know from it, and uh, very much uh, knowledgeable too. and i think the participants have not only enjoyed and they have also learned something from this presentations from this discussion as sir has said it's on our sustainable development it's on concentrated on the sustainable livelihood approach for the reduction of poverty to use our resources properly so that we can reduce our poverty level in a systematic way and also the he has shown the hazards uh, that are being uh, associated with jhum cultivation and all everything is too much content related and too much contained and oriented to our um, uh, own subject and so i hope the participants have enjoyed it um, it was very nice sir and very nice um, uh, lecture actually and very informative so now just i want to take up the question and answer session for a few minutes uh, because participants were i think participants are willing to interact with you uh, they have raised hands and some questions are there in the chat box our next speaker is waiting so i just want to take 5 to 10 minutes for the discussion uh, the uh, session is now open for it and the first question i want to take from the chat box box here someone has written that why are the people still not aware of the bad effect of shifting cultivation so we come on sir yes yes here on the back to you okay okay so actually you know as i explained that uh, uh, because shifting cultivation is the way of life for many of us so and this is culture so even it it had lots of bad impact on uh, not only on the land but also on the environment they continued um, practicing it 
But now, as I told you, that uh, the shipping cultivation area is decreased, has decreased more than 50 percent during the last. So now, and then simply cultivation is also transforming into the um, terraced cultivation, permanent cultivation. So now everything is, and it is very difficult also to people to uh, uh, make their uh, behavior change. Because once you are very acquainted with the system, you are, and it is very difficult. But now things are coming, and uh, I, I hope that soon it will be all right. And it is not only in Mizoram. It is case of the even Odisha, often all North East India. So they, they are very much acquainted. They are living with this. It is living with the people. Okay, thank you. Okay. So now is there any participant who want to uh, interact with sir or in, ask any question? I can't see any raise hands now. So, um, uh, is there any participant? Professor Sonal Shom. Yes. I think there is no participant to uh, to proceed for question. But uh, so I may uh, I may uh, tell a question now. Uh, Namaskar, yes, obviously. Namaskar, sir. Uh, actually, it is a very very nice presentation. Uh, uh, delivered by um, Professor V. Shati. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, two experience of mine. One is uh, just uh, after, uh, after, uh, during your uh, just uh, presentation. I am experiencing the uh, line, each line of a book that is economic uh, and I think uh, economic geography written by uh, written by um, Leon Morgan. Okay, I had edited uh, the Zoom cultivation. It is very nice. And secondly, uh, um, actually, uh, uh, cancer is very prevalent in this region. Uh, in Punjab, we can see that there is very uh, there is uh, a large number of cancer patients because of the misuse of uh, misuse of uh, yeah uh, say. Uh, fertilizer and uh, uh, and uh, pesticides in Punjab area, but why yes. uh, the cancer is very much very high in this area? This is my question. If you kindly tell me. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, actually, as you told that Punjab has using because fertilizer and insecticides, maybe this may be the cause. Mizoram has different story actually. Yeah. Mizoram people, they consume lots of uh, alcohol and lots of tobacco. Yes, oh, that's why. Ah, tobacco. And then again, uh, their food habit that the pork, they, what they do is that they roast it. Oh. They roast it in the, this, um, uh, uh, what do you call this, smoke, smoke from, smoke from this fuel Yeah. So they roast it. So these are the major causes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I yeah, it. yeah. I got it, sir. I got it. Why Tuba, the cancer Tuba is Tuba very high? Tuba 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 Tuba. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your nice uh, presentation as well as answering my question. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Vya. Thank you. So I think... Uh, uh, so thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for your informative session and uh, for sp uh, spending time with us. Uh, we are really grateful to you. And please, please be with us for the next session too. <laughs> yes, sure, <laughs> we will be sure, very uh, Yes, uh, if you be with us for the next session. Yeah, uh, sure, so man, sure. Our next speaker is already here, and uh, he is also a very renowned personality, and uh, he is an, uh, from another field of our geography.
So uh, he is uh, from the another field of our geography, which is very emerging now. It is the um, uh, remote sensing approach and the uh, geo uh, spatial approach of geography, the field of geography, the research uh, that uh, GIS technology, geographical information science technology, and the remote sensing approach that has newly emerged branch in geography for the study of the resources and especially the uh, uh, natural resources, also the human resources. So I must welcome Dr. Kunal Kumar Das, senior scientist, uh, retired from Indian Institute of Space Research Organization and uh, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing. So uh, I must welcome you, sir. A humble welcome from us in this uh, virtual platform of the special lecture session to, uh, of today's Kutvihar College, uh, the second session of this special lecture. Uh, and um, we are very much happy to have you with you, have with you, with us. And uh, one or two minutes uh, to just uh, uh, say a few words that uh, Professor Kunal Kumar Das, he is very senior scientist and he is retired, has uh, served 40 years in the Indian Institute of Remote Sensing and also in Indian Space Research Organization and has uh, experience of 32 years as a faculty in Forestry and Ecology Division. He was a former adjacent professor in the uh, Center of Space Science and Technology Education in India and uh, the Pacific, uh, India and the Pacific, which is affiliated to UNO from Dehradun, in India. His uh, doctoral research was from University of Twenty as a faculty of Geoinformatic Science and Earth uh, Observation. It is from Netherlands, and uh, he was awarded PhD degree from uh, HND Garwal University, Srinagar, and uh, further he has uh, awarded, he was awarded as uh, um, in, uh, his contribution were in our observation in geospatial science, satellite navigation in climatic uh, change and implications, forestry, land use dynamics and change analysis, geospatial analysis and modeling, Biodiversity assessment and protected area management, wildlife habitats, um, uh, wildlife habitat analysis and ecotourism, and the national park and wildlife sanctuaries, um, environmental hazards like forest fire, anthropogenic pressure, forest pest infestations, aerial photo interpretation, and different different era. A, he has a Versatile type of research area which is leading to uh, remote sensing, which is uh, associated with remote sensing. He has some achievements like lifetime research contribution and uh, made in remote sensing in biodiversity mapping and forest conservation conferred upon the International Conference on Global Biodiversity, Climate Change and Sustainable Development and uh, which was offered by Rajiv Gandhi University, University of Pradesh. His main hobby was uh, uh, mainly wildlife and nature conservation, also trekking and expedition in the Himalayan mountainous terrain. We just uh, sincerely welcome you and pay our gratitude towards you. And uh, I would like to uh, request you to start the session and with your valuable words to and lectures. So, so let's, let's uh, uh, be with Dr. Das. Good afternoon, sir. So, good afternoon, madam. Uh, uh, you have already introduced me before I was gathering. I'm very happy that uh, today I'm here with most of you to uh, share some of the important things what is going on in geospatial technology. I'm going to talk to you about this. This is a 
डायरेक्टली अभी ले जाता हूँ मैं अपने स्लाइड्स में और वहां से हम लोग देखते हैं कि हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं एंटर स्क्रीन जी आप लोगों को दिख रहा है मेरा ये कैन यू सी ओके फाइन नाउ इट इज क्लियर सो फाइन सो हियर वी आर तो टूडेज लेक्चर टॉपिक इज जियो स्पेशल वर्ल्ड बड़ा अच्छा नाम है ये एंड अर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड इवॉल्विंग ट्रेंड्स so what i'm going to do today is that i am going to touch upon not only the current things happening in this particular field but i am going to tell you that what is going to happen in your future also so we are we heading to all these things so geospatial technology as you as i told you earlier it is a combination of three major technology primary technology one is your remote sensing other one is your gis geographic information system and third one the third one is your your navigation system okay global navigation system so satellite system so these three are the cornerstone of our geospatial technology but that is not the end of it nowadays you are also adding many more technologies these are just like you can say that modules one is your information technology other one is that iot so internet of things then artificial intelligence right then other one you are going to add and uh, add already added here is your machine learning technology and there is no end of it so people are going to add more and more things so it is becoming more complex but again this is used by so many people here so here we go now now what i am going to discuss today about that in our earth our new marble is in precarious condition as you can see here it is just trying to balance itself from the bad and the good now what is happening here we are finding climate change is there flood is there earthquake is there forest fires is there pandemic is there okay and then many more things you know which is not supposed to be there it is there taking a toll of human kind so our our values are going down so many species here are disappear from the world this days so we have having a lot of problems here so what you can do here can we sustain our things like this we can bring it to the pristine time which we had earlier kya hum la sakte hain usko dobara aap mujhe puchhenge to main bolunga nahi la sakte hum aap us jo aaj din hai usi ko hum log sambhal ke rakhe to wohi bolte hain 
So that is why what we are trying to, our mission is that somehow we have to use certain things, you know, including the technological part also, to bring our, bring our earth, or make our earth lively, if we will. So that's what we're doing it here. Now you see that, that I am just telling you about three major technologies, which is creating waves these days. One is your, your geospatial technology, that we are going to discuss about that. Other one is your nano technology. Nano means that we are going to miniaturize everything in a very small area and yet you are getting very good information, small amount. And third one is the biotechnology. It's a boon again. It is trying to increase our, uh, say, food capability, our food quality, you can say, the living standard also. So these three, you know, are the very important technology. And then geospatial technology, as I told you, is the combination of these three, what you see here. But then what people used to do and then what they stop here is that they make a map and that is the end of it. No, it is not like that. One has to go beyond that. The use of geospatial technology is only successful if you go for modeling, the ultimate thing. And for that, you know, you have to use so many important criteria, maybe statistical enumeration you have to do, maybe empirical formulas you have to use to develop something, some model, which is actually going to provide you information here that after some few years, you know, the scenario is, will be something like that. So that is like that. But here also, we are not supposed to forget one important thing, the man behind the machine, we people. So what kind of data we are collecting in here? So if I am collecting a very good kind of data, you know, useful data, correct data, accuracy is there, then fine. I, I am getting a very good model also. That's the thing. Then we are getting all this information, one from the primary source that is called the remote sensing platforms. And these remote sensing platform, what you can see here, that there are four platforms I've already shown you. One is a ground platform, something like this. The girl is measuring things on the ground. That's an in-situ collection of data. Okay, it is very correct. Then what happens here, the aerial cameras are being used in the aircraft to scan the area and collect, collect the information of that particular area. It's a huge area. And third one that you are going to the space using the space platform from where the satellite is using its capability to see a vast area, you know, including entire Earth. Okay, many times, sometimes using many satellites, okay, revolving like it, and then you are getting very good information in real time. So you are doing it. But then if you want to study something very minutely in a very smaller area, then you will come back to a low platform area where you have grown two wavelengths, so unmanned aerial vehicles. So we are just trying to show you some of the things here, you know, how we are going to do that. Now, just tell you about our organization, you know, we have done a lot of work, you know, we have progressed. If historically, if you see that from last 50 years, you know, we have progressed tremendously in doing so many things here. So you see here that some of the figures were been shown by, uh, for the ESO missions, you know, where you can see that 111 spacecraft mission our people have done so far okay many satellites have come up there including the foreign satellites and amongst them you'll find many remote sensing satellites are also there, very high resolution to the coast resolution and also some weather satellites and other things you're going to see it is like that so this is the kind of things you know india is doing here and india is also doing a wonderful job in geospatial technology now, what we are getting from the remote sensing technology or you can say geospatial weather, we can go for a very important things. We can find out things from the Earth's office. So here, everything is shown here. Almost everything you can do. Directly or indirectly. Indirect measurement you can do to find out things just below the Earth's surface or the deep sea areas also there where people are exploring something new. They are trying to interlink with the sufficient characters of this and then trying to find out the things there. So you see that this is the kind of thing is there. Then uh, one more important thing is there that remote sensing, in fact, per se, has started with that food security only initially in 1960s when American people have they tried to find out where production is going and what kind of production, food production is going on all around the world because they are businessmen. 
they want to do, wanted to supply the wheat and other things like corn and rice and other things to the area where deficiency were there in those days. So what they do? They, they used to fly over, over, over those countries, you know, like Russia, India, the USSR over there, then China and all this, who are very big consumers also. And they try to find out whether crop failure is there or not. If crop failure is there, immediately they, they in, if to tell the people in their own country, uh, the farmers, that you go for production of this much of corn. Okay, they will product it. The moment season is over, you know, and then there is a hue and cry about the uh, food grain uh, stock in the country, like India. Then what they used to do? They used to ask us that you want this thing. Okay, I will provide you. So they used to do business like that. So that is the earliest thing happened here. Food security. For food security, you see that even now, this is a very critical area where you see the satellite remote sensing and other things are blocking there. Using that, you are able to find out where the paddy is there in a given area, how much paddy production is there per acreage, that much of things you can do. And also you can find out what is the population and related production, topping intensity also. Like see here, you see that you see that here in northern India is much more populated area. Okay. So here that cropping intensity is also very high, it seems like that. So as compared to the South India, like that. So oh, this is the kind of things we are happening these days. So real-time information you are getting through your satellite signal. There is one scenario just I am going to show you. This is a watershed where certain kinds of agriculture practices are being carried out here. Now, there are two major crops. One is your Kharif, other one is your Rabi. So let us see in Rabi, you know, in 2024, here you see that. May 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 May, kya hua tha? May May May, production hone ki koshish ki thi, okay? Then this much of area was under production. What you see here, then, but kya kya ho raha tha? Kis time mein? Jul June, July mein, July, August mein. So that month-wise information was provided because we had the capability to look to the same area several times. So repetitive coverage was there using the temporal capability of the satellites. Here also you see that 2008, 2009. We have a difference. 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 So, what you get here that you get is the correct picture of how much production will be there in coming days and how much will go to the market. So, government will think if some shortfall is there, it will immediately import from somewhere. And thereafter, it will try to fill it up. So that prices should not increase. So these kind of things are there. Similarly, for the Rabi also, you see that it happens like that. And for Kharif, Rabi, if you see that the peak season also, where there is any failure is there due to scanty rain and other things like that, or uh, there was no cultivation, proper cultivations, okay, like that. So all this information these days, you are able to capitalize from your satellite remote sensing data, like that. So, same area, several things are there. So, this is called Land Viewer Tool. Tool hai, okay? Tool matlab kya hai ye? Aap, jaysa ke aap Airdas imaging khoolte hai, ya fir, now, sometimes, you know, what happens, you also work on QGIS, or, or also you work on RGIS. Is tar se, kaam karta hai. Is tar se, bhoat sare, hamar paas, portals hai, okay, aur hum log bolte hai, jis mein hum log kaam kar sakte hai, this is a land viewer. Land viewer mein kya hai, ki aapka satellite ka data, aap bhoat sare satellite ka data leke usko usi mein analyze kar sakte hai, aapko jo system khud aapko support karega, help karega to identify things like agriculture is agriculture, water is water, okay, snow is snow, cloud is cloud, something like that. Aur within agriculture some changes. Or shallow water, deep water, fine. You can do that also. So for that, what happens here? You are going to do all kind of classification here in land viewer in real time. Apne data download kia, okay? Data download hua, and data download hone ke baad on the fly processing. Man, apne usko process bhi kardi apka system mein. Okay? Apke baad bhot sare bands hai, jis kamro spectral bands bolte hai. Apne choose kia. Apke matlab ka jo hai. And then thereafter, those bands have been utilized to 
characterize things on the ground. Okay, so your data has been classified properly and you get information like that. So you can do GIS also in this. You are going to use your navigation system to find out the position of that. So you can tie up very correctly and all you can do. Small, this is called a smart analytical tool. If you do this, then you can use the system that I have system in the laptop. You can also do that. And you have the capability of GIS analysis also. So I will show you one thing in this. A very interesting thing. First thing that what you can do here, you see that. I am showing you how to do the area. Okay? So this is the terrain adjacent areas. Something like that. This is already embedded in your system. So what you get? You see, there is a satellite that is looking at there. That satellite is a very important satellite. So that is actually capturing all the information on the ground here. So you are going to get all these informations from the satellite and these of this terrain complexity map what you see here right now this terrain complexity map you are already created because you have uh, points information there x y z information of that terrain of that area you are extrapolated it after that you have created a 3d model so this is the 3d model and what you see here in the 3d model the heights are also given so you have the things here. Now suppose, if I want to further analyze it, okay, I want to just pinpoint to some areas like that. Now, your coach bear is here, okay? So I have blown it up, and then I can see that coach bear is here. So what you see here, you are actually seeing a DEM, Digital Elevation Model, not DTM right now. Okay, means you can utilize this terrain complexity later on for the DTM also. And that is what you are going to do here. Maybe it is useful for you. And then what I can do that I can straight away download your data on my system here, like this here. RPK area here. You know the terms it. So, we want to characterize it. Okay. Now, the problem with us is that that this is a two color. Two color may both is not able to, we are not able to see it properly and we do not able to discriminate many objects here. So, therefore, we fail to correctly classify things. So, suppose this is of 2020, December, 30th December. The scenario is something like that. But then, if I just compare this with one more scenario of May 2021, okay, so 24th May, you greenery be more than that. Okay, fine. Maybe some rainfall was there during that period, maybe, so it is all blooming in this area. Now, I have an option to interpret this area. So, digital image processing come into play where your computer, your software is helping you to find out things here. That maybe you are having the brown tooth and you are utilizing that brown tooth to, to actually increase the accuracy of that area. So in later on also you can do that. So in Land Viewer, you can classify something like this while you are taking a false color composite like that. You can take a number of bands. But what I can see here, a false color composite of three bands, okay? That is your infrared is there, red is there, green is there. So wherever some vegetation is there, it is red. Other it is not there. Now I have the options here. I am going to classify it. So I classify it. So this is a crude classification. A crude classification of now you see that the few classes have been shown here. Some of the classes are of course not there, like snow and other things, but it is already there. Okay. So you have given the cloud also, sidus cloud. This is a sidus cloud cover, very thin one over here also. So this all this has been classified. So your machine is doing it. So machine driven work where AI, the AI, artificial intelligence is also helping you to give information like that. So everything is doing, and you are trying to further improve it, refine it. Now I can do it further. Suppose if I want to find out the health and vigor of the plant or the agriculture crops, anywhere I can go for certain kinds of work like this, like we call NDVI. This is, uh, in fact, 
ratio in tactics, band ratio in tactics, where bands have been ratioed to get it. So different kinds of things are there. So you have an option to do that. So you see that you can do anything in your house, you can do anything in your house, you can do anything in you can retrieve all this information, you can keep it here, you can further make it classes here, you know, to refine it here using GIS technique because GIS is also there in that. So, all, all you see that icon, you can do a lot of many things here like that. Satellite data, different kinds of satellite data, you can recall. So, you can recall also, say, Landsat series of satellites, you can recall other satellites also like that. So what you are going to get here, that you are going to get a very good things like that. Similarly, forest monitoring is one of the important things where world is also very much eager to know that how much forest we are having. But I tell you here that our forest is decreasing everywhere in the world, either by we people who are destruct due to our destructive qualities, or you can say the habits, or maybe due to the people, those who are actually logging it to convert it for some other activities like that, like your know, farming is there, agricultural farming or something else like that. So here also, the satellite are providing you a lot of information. Now, if you want to know that how much forest was there since our civilization, civilization we know that we have seen that we have seen that we have seen Auto forest, you know, Cheta de Amra Jante Pari, a Rajke Jante Pari, Tambaita Bustu Paru, he Amade forest coat to come who is it? Amade Jongota Koto Kong who is it? So now see that people have done it also. How they have done it there? They have collected sample points from different areas in the forest all around the world, thousands of sample points, sample points, they extrapolated it. Also, they try to find out some paleo. This is information, you know, so like paleoclimatic conditions are there. So whatever things are there, whatever information so possible, they have to try to scoop up. They have gone through all these things and then they put all these things in a supercomputer to find out that the world forest has actually depleted since our civilization and we are having 46% of the forest, what we had earlier. So this kind of thing, the futuristic modeling bhi kar sakte hai, aap bank bhi kar sakte ho. So aap you can find out that how much forest is there right now. But this time around, what you can see, you have satellites, okay. Now, this is your MSS, multispectral scanner. This is our ERTS satellites, we have time mein bhi bolte hai. Hum log bolte hai, this is our Landsat series of satellites. So 1975, mein, 79 meter resolution, mein, Brazil used to look like this. Okay. Now oh, it was a dense forest, you see that there is no space, no opening like that. But as time passes, you know, you see that human intervention changed the stupid scenario. Now in 1986, deep people started entering into the forest, cutting the trees, loggers have come there and they're trying to transform the forest after massacring forest, Amazon forest like that. Now this is biodiversity rich forest, you know. This it is also a matter of uh, very concern for the world communities that if something goes wrong, then everything will change. By 1992, we find that more changes took place like that, and they have gone even deeper inside, and they started establishing their own ranches like that. Like this, here, by 2001. So what I mean to say that that this trend is going on. Now people have started destructing forests by fire also. And it is there in our Himalayan areas also where I am, I am from Uttarakhand. So here also people are doing it. Your area is also suffering like that. So so we are having concern. But that geospatial technology can give you solution and n number of solution. And then solution, you the applicability is yours. How you are going to execute the plan like that. One more important thing they'll see that how machine is going to do a lot of work here. Now our, our planet is there, okay? We are having many satellites. Right now, we are having 1,200 plus satellites all moving around the Earth, okay? And then they are doing various kinds of jobs. And many of them are remote sensing satellite, weather satellite, communication satellites. So we, our remote sensing, 
or in geospatial data collection, you know, we collect all this data from these three kinds of satellites here. So what you see here is that one of the good satellites, what we call the Sentinel, Sentinel 1 and 2 always move in tandem. It's not a very good parameter. And they go on taking pictures of the same area. So you get repetitive coverage very fast. And the spectral graphs are also very good. So you get a very good information. And then using the machine learning and AI, artificial intelligence approach. So that reduces the time taken for interpretation. Okay. But machine is helping you. And you have ground truth, enormous ground truth you are having already. That is there in the cloud. So you are accessing it, you are bringing it back, putting it in the system here, and trying to analyze and extrapolate the information like that. So what you have here, you have a data which is converted into a classified data like this. Here, computer has done it for you. But then, if anything is wrong, it is correct to put the body. For example, the asteroids monitor, the asteroids take us to the agriculture, the habitation, the habitation, and then you have several channels are also there. If, even if I find something wrong, misinterpreted, we call it, we can correct it here. But most of the work is done by the system here. And that too, in a very high resolution data, 10 meter, 10 meter, the both are shown, our zone. Agriculture plants feed in a 10 meters. So you see that the computer has created like that. So this on this, you know, you can do a lot of work. So on demand, you can immediately recall the areas concerned anywhere in the world. You can do it here. So after you, you can see the things here in the video also. May have quick video they can push Let us play like this. Can you see the video? Video the crap. Video the crime. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what I am going to show you here is that that uh, some of the things you know that uh, Kilimanjaro is also there. So it is classified by the machine with AI support, and then this one you have already seen here. Agriculture is also there. Forest is also there. Water body is also there. So different kinds of agricultures are also there. So what you have here, you have tremendous capability to utilize the geospatial technology. Now coming to another platform that is called ArcGIS, Living Atlas. And they are doing wonderful job. They are creating many more things, including they are working in Mangal Grahme. Again, the core code is the Canada. They just they have classified it something like this, okay? And using a uh, 2021 bother was data. And what they did, you know, the, with machine learning AI support, they have converted everything into like this a land use record of man. It is not that the army can do the Means because man there the machine is supreme. He can do anything, you know. Anytime he can change it. So that is the thing. Yeah. So you can find out the changes here. You can also find out the actual status of different land use on the process. It area statistics, everything you can do that. So that is the kind of thing happening these days, you know, like that. Here also, what you see that 3D models you have created. Now this is Colorado River, USA. Okay, yeah, we have Bellevue, Aage Jaake. Yeah, temperature bhi bahut bada hai Now, badne ke baad it has gone something like plus 50 degrees centigrade. Okay, that kind of things are there. So, you know, how they have created it here? Now, they have utilized contours. One thing. Second thing, they have their values, or we call the GPS values of different areas, pixel values. One pixel ka value, X, Y, Z. Usko extrapolate karne ke they have created this. So, they have created a 3D. Where you can use it? You can use it for terrain characteristics, the case study. So land landform study may anywhere if you trap it with some land use land cover map, you know, you know that where it is. You can also find out changes where some vulnerability is also there, supposed to be there. Like for example, landslide zones, okay. And soil creeping is there also. And a flood flooded area supposed to be like this. So these kind of things can be done here. 
So you have created a 3D okay, terrain map like that. You can create it also in your area like that. Now see it here. So this is ultimate. Normally, okay, area map. Now what our keyboard say could be almost a flat area. I'm Jani now koto can MSL koto high region. Into our money meter Buddha hobby show the ticket. I could give you a channel. Okay, okay, okay. Then what happens here, you know? Suppose if I use a contour interval in one is to fifty thousand map, topographical map by sub of India, you know the contour interval there is one is a forty meter. Forty meter. So forty meter to only beshi hoy. So auto forty meter jodi ame ekta kichu ekta map banai terrain complexity me kichu dekha jabe na. Ame ekhane ekta bujano chista kuchhi ki ekhane ekta ase jikhane ekta amra kuchhi arke wa eight er mude twenty four meter er ekchi ekchi chorche jeta jeta jo flat type er. Ar je oita ke amra jodi aro choto kore dekhi dekha chhe. Oita ke aro choto kore dekhi amra ki dekho. कि हम ना 50 सेंटीमीटर देखी तो छोटे-छोटे माइक्रो रिलीफ्स हो चुके आज चे शेटाई तो हमारे दौर का तो एक्सट्रापोलेशन इज़ आल्सो पॉसिबल दिस डेज़ सो शेटाई हमें देखा ना चिस्टा कोची जिधर को नेक्स्ट डे इधर आज चे देखो एक ठीक आज चे विंडो दे देखूँ हमें देखा ना चिस्टा कोची इधर के इतना के स्टैंड स्टील लेके ची अमी एरो दिए देखा ना चेस्टा कर ची ऐसा देखा ना चेस्टा करूँ कि देखूँ एक है ना कि कॉटो चेंजेस आज ची माने you are able to go for 50 सेंटीमीटर इंटरवल आल्सो मेबी मोर फॉर योर एरिया लाइक दैट एंड वंस यू हैव दिस यू कैन गो फॉर वेरियस काइंड ऑफ प्लानिंग आल्सो डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्लानिंग ओके लाइक दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स यू कैन डू दैट हियर सो आज के दिन में दुनिया एक ने पूछे गए थे माने एक तो उन्नति हो गई है हमारे जियो स्पेशल टेक्नोलॉजी से लेकिन सर्वेइंग इज वन ऑफ द इंपोर्टेंट क्राइटेरिया आल्सो और एक तो देखा था आपने now you see this. This is a general trend. How the changes taking place using two different years data. You can find out the what are the changes. How looks of that. Most of the undergraduate people, the students, they are doing it. You know, to take here, take take about so. Pata laga kaun kaun sa changes hai. Okay, fine. So it is something like that. 2006 mein Lucknow mein kuch aisa tha. And by 2011, another five years mein bahut bada ek settlement yahan pe. So change in action. So these kind of change direction can be done here. But this time around, you can also plan that how the change direction is going to help you for further developing your cities or rural areas. So that is scientifically or what you call the smart cities. So now next comes your hazards and risk where the data is used effectively. Most of the satellite data here use R or your post resolution data because you need a big area. For big area, you don't need a very sharp satellite information data, but still you can use it. But suppose if you want to focus on a very small area, then there you can use a nano satellite also, you can use a drone also to get the information of that particular area. So hazards and risks, okay, these are two important things which is actually building to your disaster, possibly like that. So, when, what we are going to see here, that we are going to see three different satellites, okay, which are actually creating waves this days. One is your macro satellites, your bada satellite, which is our IRS, okay, spot satellite we have, Landsat series of satellites we have, okay. And these satellites are not quite big, but then these are also having lot many sensors, and the longevity of these, sat these particular satellites are also very big. So, these are different also, but then these are costly. But then, in between the nano satellite and also the macro satellite, you have a micro satellite where the weight is less, and that is your more than 500 kilograms like that. Yet it is giving you that much of information. I'll show you that. And then, when things are miniature, miniaturized, I told you initially the days are there for the nano, nano technology, biotechnology, and geospatial technology. So this is the part of nanotechnology here. So when it becomes smaller, say 1.3 kilometer uh, kilo or say a shoe box type of structure and you have miniaturized things inside this it can yet give you a very good response of anything like that. You can compare these two like this micro and nano satellites like that. You see that it can you can hold it like that also but yet it is giving you 
the difference between these two that this cannot survive for a longer period of time in your system here because the fuel will go over and then it can go a little bit more and then my macro satellite will go even for years like that so these are the things happening now now you see here this is your one important sky set satellite i'm sure you this is a macro satellite where capability these days is there that you can create videos is that 79 to 80 80 snaps per second you can take means that you can create a video to mai aapko ye dikhane ki koshish kar raha hu you see that this is a video right this is a video i can show you like this also like this see now this is in japan volcano eruption is there about to be there so a lot of fuel is coming out so this is there's so ashes are coming okay carbon dioxide carbon monoxide so these have having very 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 much implications for the mankind so if you are studying through the satellite you can for one people to move to some other area because you know its direction also it what direction it is going to and what is the status state uh, the status of this but then what you can do here also that sometime you can also study for other things like surveillance like this ab ye dekhiye ye hai aapka burj khalifa khalifa ye wala burj khalifa theek hai this is burj khalifa in uh, in dubai okay then aircrafts are also flying over here i see that there are vehicles going like this so all these areas are moving so if aircraft shadow is also there so what you can do some kind of surveillance can also be done so you can also do um, say that traffic regulations like that so satellite is providing you all kind of things these days we have the video capability also so this is your sky set satellite coming to the nano satellite the smallest one this is doing wonder but you have to put it in a groups say 20 50 70 maybe hundreds of things are required to be put there then you get the information there and then you get very sharp data okay pictures or imagery as compared to the nan the micro and macro satellites so here the dog satellite is there one of the american satellites do there are many dog satellites are there india also shoot up this kind of satellites earlier and it is there still there what is there there see that here you see that camera it is so small in fact the camera has to be this big this big in the bigger one but here one it becomes too small this is called miniaturized yet it is providing you have all kind of information and you see that this is your international space station stations antenna is there okay solar sail is there like that and small small see boxes are there these are your nano satellite one two three okay being released from that this is like this and this is providing you not many information so one of the applications that i'm going to show you you already know that in our area of lunch was there our lunch was actually triggered by the landslide so these together has destroyed a this very good okay that uh, hydro electric power stations like that so this happens like that now this particular dope science of satellite and can provide you a very good information what is actually happening during that period of time means that you need to have two satellites at least okay different time so then you can do some kind of comparison so here in this animation you are seeing a comparison okay comparison of this what is happening here something has broken up from here the big mass has just gone down here now it is created dust dust all around it here and then entire thing has flowing down here we putting the debris then snow melting then all kind of things are there and there's rushing back to the lower gradients like that and that is destroyed hydroelectric power station many people have died also so you see that you can recreate conditions like that so scenario can be recreated using this type of satellites they can forewarn you also that this is going to happen here no care you don't do that so for us you know it is one of the lesson that some of the things one we should not do in all the places like creating hydroelectric power station in sensitive areas like himalayas so what we have done here more than 50 uh, um, hydroelectric power station either actually active or under construction in our part of the world and more like that in other portions also 
So this is the things happening here. You see that. You can critically see and find out the things here. You can measure it also. How much fall is there? Say this 50 meter, you know, it's a 500 meter. It's a very, very big thing, you know. When it goes down, tumbling under the rushing downs of 1,800 meter fall, state fall, then naturally you can you can imagine that what will happen to the things there, all glaciers and other things down below. So that kind of things here. And you can create finally the modeling. So modeling, what it is saying. So modeling is saying that actually giving you the conditions at that period of time, you know, what happened there, where the magnitude of this thing was more, okay, like that, okay, and like this, right, where it is, it has actually broken down from these portions, and then it started moving to these areas like that, and these are the flooded areas rushing down from this whole grid place like that. So you can create a 3D view also, you can do that. Other thing the small satellite can do that they can provide you information with respect to that crop changing pattern in the area. Crop changing pattern. See that. See that. Here you can see May 9, 10, 12, all this thing, you know. This is a cropping season in Idaho, USA. So you can form or you all, all kind of information there. So like that. Like that. Yeah. So in similarly, in the forest fire you can do. And we have very good portal uh, also there that we call the Bhuban. There you can download data also. You can do a lot many things. One of the things you can do that you can also find out where fire is there. So we are getting all information from some certain kinds of macro satellites where you have a satellite capability is that it is giving you coarse resolution data and then you are finding all these things there like that in our Uttarakhand area for example like this. And in the plain area these are all say the agriculture residue under fire like that. So this kind of and then you have not many other things are happening like that. So you can create an animation also like that. You can go on people there like forest department, look here, fire is there, why it is going, what is the direction like that. And finally you can create a 3D view and in that 3D view you can also run this like that. So you're going towards 90,000 now. So under fire. 2019, a lot of fire was there. See that plume of smoke coming up, and the red is your actually the active fire, active fire, and the black is already charred area. See, a lot of area has been destroyed like this, or partially destroyed, and these are all intact like this. And this is your Nanital, and this is Nanital um, University is there. You know that Kumai University above that also in fire was there, like that. So this kind of thing you can do. One thing I want to, to show you here that suppose somebody is doing some PhD work, research work. Now this is mainly for those who are working for some kind of research work, researchers. And you see here that a national park is there. Now this national park is the Rantambo National Park in Rajasthan, which is covered from all the sites with habitations, okay, that revenue area. So it is actually bottled up in this particular area. And the animals and other things no way to go, very difficult to go to this area. This is your Banas River, we call it. And from here, you know, this is your Chambal River. So you see that the scenario is something like this. We have a dry residuous forest here mostly. And, and in FCC, where IR has been used, you can see forest something like that. So we have clipped that area. Okay. But also in the area called area of interested area. And you have National Park boundary also here the core and buffer and the adjacent area, so make the call fringe area. So these many things are there. Now suppose you want to study in different themes, like for example, a geologist would be interested to know about the geology, geology want to make a geological map, he can do it. And also somebody is interested to do something like a geographer, like a landform analysis, fine, you can do. A forestry man can do a lot of work here, like you can show in the different kind of major species growing in that particular area. In addition to that, what are the invasive species, okay, in that particular area? What are the water resources? What are the falls, pictures, all this? And all things you can see here, like this. You can create 3D view also, like this. The beauty of this and the benefit of this is that you are able to study not many things sitting in your lab, okay, thousands of kilometers away. You know this is escarpment, fine? Then you have a tree list system over here. You can see, you see that 
these are all invasive species. This is your valley, okay? Structural hills, okay? Two different formations are there. One is your Bindian, other one is your Bilwara super group of rocks. Like that. This is our agricultural area. So these kind of things you can do here. And suppose I want to study everything very meticulously for my future work, I can do it like this. Just see. So here you are. So you are seeing not many structural hills are there, denudational hills are there, okay, residual hills are there, okay, escarpments are there, like here, okay. And if you want to study meticulously again in this particular and then degraded areas, okay, forested area degraded due to human intervention, like this. And then when you are moving around this in 360 degree, you can stop it anytime. And see that this is a valley, this is your area where from where a fault is possible, great boundary fault is there. Okay, and separating these two formations here one is your Bilwara Super Group of Rock, and the other one is your Bindian system here, like that. And I can again play it like that. So I can identify a lot of things like grassy patches there, like like forested areas there. And I can I can just decide that what kind of activities I have to do here, plan, planning purpose, all degraded areas like that. So this is plan, this is something like that. So once you do it, you know, you can come back to uh, your work and then you find that what many changes are there. Roughly you can draw like this in a two-dimensional data format like that. And you feel that this yellow boundary is actually showing all degraded areas on top of that. Some green ribbon is also there, but this green ribbon is also giving you information with respect to that some invasive places we call cross of fish tree flowers. So, bada bada kata hota hai. Wo kata agar ye tiger ka lag gaya na, wo tiger cannot keep sapping ho jayega usko. Wo mar jayega na kaake. So, either ke problem hote hain. In to ekhane onay ko kome jomtu achhe. Ye sabai dekhte paare, bhalo jayega. So, 418 square kilometer area. And then, if you want to study the cross section of the entire area choosing this particular line transact that something is like this. Now they go a geologist, a geomorphologist, a, a geographer, a forest expert, a botanist, everybody is having lot many information like that. So this is a kind of things you know can be used for PhD work. So why if you use certain kinds of say for example um, modeling Modeling करेंगे mm -hmm. तो आप इसलिए में कितना ज़्यादा pressure है वो भी मालूम कर सकते हैं what I have shown you here wood cutting pressure people coming from different area cutting it this is called infringement so these are the affected areas as market so finally you can give some prescription also on how to do and save your area like that a core area that what I am just thinking to show you here that this is a very important area where you are able to um, you, have to, you are able to actually tag uh, different animals, sheep, whatever it may be, and find out where they go. So satellite navigation is involved there. And that system is called Argos. Argos is the advanced research and global observation satellite system. This is a constellation of satellites, okay? And this constellation of satellites, what is happening here, that these are collecting information from the tagged Things you know, that means jump on sensor laga hota. Like mere mere sensor laga diya, it will go on everything. Signals and satellite will catch that, and that will give you my position. So that kind of information. So how I just come here, just like that. Like that. So this kind of information is provided, is there, and this is all plotted on the GIS domain. So GIS me jab karenge, then you have information with respect to where the particular thing was there that period of time. So real time position position. Is possible like that, so it is all done something like this. All tag birds are there, for example. It is all actually signals are going to the satellite, and then it is passing to the processing center from their people are there, and then they are reporting that where 
these words are there at that period of time. Now, this key thing is there. If it is something like this, I can show you one case in Northeast also where Amu falcor. Okay, this is a bird. It's a raptor, in fact. It moves from, say, Siberian area that to Amu River. Amu River. So, Amu River, which is our Mongolia, is the Chinese border city. It seasonally they move to South Africa. Now the distance is too big. Now you wanted to know that how they move. That your sensor can only provide you the information, otherwise there is no way. So what you are doing here, that you have you are actually trying to put sensor over the system here. Like this small bird. How everything is managed as I told you, you know. A small system, something like this, which is also called platform transmitter terminal, PPT, is actually fixed here. Antenna test yeah. And then there is a battery here, okay? The battery, of, you can see the size of the battery in a very small. And it is being charged by the solar system. Okay. So these birds, when they move, you know, wherever they move, they are going to pass on the signals, you know, you can plot them. That, their positions there. For example, you can see this. Obviously, they can. So, two birds one is your Naga, other one is your Panti. They have named it something like that. So, they are moving, you know, they have reached, reached Losotho. This is Losotho here. Yeah. Okay, South African area. Then. Crossing this Arabian Sea non non stop flight 72 hours. But the thing is that while coming back, you know, they have taken a different route like that. And why it is so? If you go on uh, studying the environmental condition that time around, they will find there is changes. The temperature also, precipitation also. Okay. So all these things, you know, humidity also. So we know many things, you know. And the, beauty of this particular kind of study is that we human beings, we come to know that what kind of disease is being passed on to from one area to the another, one thing. Second thing that we also come to know about that what are the impending disaster waiting for us. So impending disaster means any type of storm is there. We are not able to see that. But birds and animals, they can, they, they can realize all these things. So they forewarn us that this is going to happen here. So, therefore, this kind of tagged movement is very important. So, for biologists also, for environmentalists also, for other people also, so they know it like that. Other one is something like this, the case, man. This is the frontier area. This is your international space station. You can open in the past few kilometers. So, every day it is moving here. So, it is having a big antenna. Now, this can also be done here. Now, what is happening here the, with Planck, Max Planck Institute, okay, USA, Kesad Milke, ornithologist, they try to find out that the worldwide jitnebi birds here, wherever it is stacked, or marine animals, or whatever it may be, they can at one go can collect information. So, this is called your downlink. And uplink is here. Downlink means that it is sending signals, it is working based on the Doppler system. Doppler system is what will happen. Then what will happen? The moment it goes out, you know, it goes and decreases. Using that, they can find out the speed. So speed and direction, if it is known, then you can find out this position also. So it is a complex process, mathematical process to find out. So this kind of thing, downlink and uplink, is providing you information about the position of that particular object in a given period of time. So this is coming up. Sir, how much time you can provide me? <laughs> okay, I'll, if you give me more, you know, the, okay, I'll try to finish it off. Things are coming to an end. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So now you see that Hathi is there. Okay. 
of course the photograph or animation you see this is african elephant this is this is not indian one but that uh, what i want to say that corridor system hamare yahan par kya hai that hamare uttarakhand mein lot of elephants are there uh, they are moving from one place to another like i mean there are so in there are there is one national park is there that is called your rajaji national park lot of elephants are there 180 approximately they also group in herds and they move and periodically to another national park which is a very good one that is jim corbett national park while moving from one national park to another they have to cross some impediment one is the ganga river okay usko cross karke jana hai bachche ko leke arekta jinis ki hocche ki jagah jagah settlement hoye geche seta modhe ache eta haridwar haridwar e encroachment hoye geche army camp o ache sob kichu ache जंगल जंगल कटे जंगलिए So I am just showing you one thing here. This is India. Okay, India के ऊपर मैं drive करता हूँ forested area like this. So this is your forested area. We have not much forest area. Okay, so it is something like that. Now next you see this was the original actually habitat of elephant. They used to move. There was no actually barrier in those days in older days. Now what happens here? The everywhere their area has been captured and transformed into agricultural patches. So it has become the avenue area. There are two area I'm going to tell you. One is your Rajaji National Park. This is your Corbett National Park, not far off from each other. But then they have to venture from this end to other uh, one end. After taking risk, and then I'll show you in FCC how the things are there. So this is your Rajaji National Park. And you see that this area, this area is your Haridwar. Okay, this is the army camp area. They are supposed to cross this area. They cross it, of course, but then with great difficulty because everything people have wall, created wall, and all that. And both men just there, all of them. And both men, this case is over here. Like that. So what happened? There are the ones over here, this side, and this is Sarpur or all these areas, this side. So this is red is your forested area. This is your area. Where your dissected terrain is there, Shivali hills. Okay, not much things are growing here, but then you have grass, bob, upper grass, both grass. Okay, these kind of things are there. And then lot of food is over here. And then you have mixed forest here, so very good for this elephant. So they go, go from here to here to take water. Okay, crossing this this way, rich, right? Every day almost they are going and then coming back also. And seasonally, with their herd, you know, they move from one end to another, taking race from different settlements. People now, these are all settlements. Yellow, they are yellow. So, for a second, they can move from south west. Another national park, I have not taken. It is a one. It is a Corbett National Park. Okay, that's it. It is a Ram Ganga Nagar Nadi. It is a one. A second, they have a banana tree. It is a one. A Ram Ganga tree. राजा जी नेशनल Okay, this is your Rajaji National Park, right? Other one is your Corbett National Park. This one. Now see that between this one you know, there is a gap, and this is the most sensitive area which they have to encounter with their siblings and small uh, the, the kids. You can say that they have to go from this end to the other because they need lot of food every day. So what happens here? Then next, so they are moving like that, okay, taking risk and avoiding the hilly, slopey areas because if they go, they will fall down and they will die. And they are taking, they are also taking chance 
going through the agricultural area. So this is a historical area, I can say. And then what happens here? That distance between these two is, as I told you, is one of the very critical areas they have to cover here, like that. Now you have taken one FCC, okay, false color composite you have created. You have created DEM. After that, you have created DPM, okay. And in that, you know, you have wrapped the forest things, you know, all the end use land something like that. So this is on to 1990, what you see here, and then the elephant has to move from this end to another. This is your historical path. They used to move like that earlier, but no longer they can do this. All out of form for them. And then, next, what happens here? That these elephants has to go to these areas where a lot of degradation is also taking place. This is your this is your reserve forest area, not a national park area, right? Okay, so a lot of things are happening in this area. Degradation is taking place here. So, of course, they are not bothered much about that, but that scenario is something like that. Degradation is taking place here. Then, 2005 scenario or something like that. And then, 2015, okay, so because you are tracing it also, tracking the element the, and this elephant herds, so you know where they are, so you know very well that what what path they are taking. So, 2015, around like this. So, when this work was done in 2015, you know, and we wanted to know that what will happen in 2020. So, in 2020, using certain kinds of uh, statistical algorithms, you know, we, we call predictive modeling, we could find out that these elephants have to shift 0.5 to 3 kilometers towards south. Means all niche anahe, cross karega nitune. Because there is not much enough food in these upper areas into the degradation also. And they cannot venture into the sloping area, deep, steep sloping area. So this is one of the things. One more research work for the people who are working in North Bengal area. So they can do it here. So one more important area is that microdon. Microdon, I told you, you know, this is one is we call also that um, drone is there, okay? So drone is there, UAV. Or these are very versatile things, you know. And uh, these can change the uh, many, many new uh, old concepts also. The best thing that it can take the view of any area, smaller area, of course, and give you picture and scenario of that area, what is actually happening in that area. Now, this area, you see that there is some agriculture was going on, still going on. Okay, now agriculture fellow, this is not like part of the area. This is our forested area, a road is passing through like this. Okay, and this MS 39 is also very passing through a sensitive area where a lot of landslides are there. So, you are monitoring all this information from these areas. Okay, these points. So, point information we are having. So, there's a periodic landslide, and then it is sloping like that. It is going down to the other areas, the lower areas where it is going to the rivers. So, where you have to go for, uh, say, creating bunds, for example, retaining walls, we call it, or whether you want to change the road alignment at all in this area, if this thing passes through the air, like that. So, these kind of things are there. So, impact analysis, so landslide analysis can be done here. So, this is one of the very important things you can do. That in, this shows the hazards in that particular area, what kind of hazard is there, or where the vehicle will stop in that period of time for hours together, cannot move like that. So there are few applications are also there. So one more application is there that a town planner, those who are actually working on the, you can see um, that uh, town planner was smart city concept to come career, na? Unke liye they can create model like that. In this way. Okay. The other thing that those who are working at the utility fields like this, where nowadays what happens here, you have a high tension power line over here, but you want to find out where any fault is there or not. So periodic checking is there. You don't have to climb. Only thing you have to fly using a drone. A drone gives you a bird's eye view of that particular area. What you see here, from here, you can zoom up also. You can see if any fault is there, anything is lacking in that area, then you can also rectify it. So that kind of thing is there. Other thing is that this is Shillong, okay, uh, now in northeast of 
prayer of the Northeast. So here you see that 71 photographs have been cast together. Okay, this is a mosaic. This is a true color mosaic. And then you see that we wanted to show that how many trees are there. If you want, then you can find out that what is total growing stock in that particular area. Growing stock for the plate kitna ubra hai, iska kitna hai, asset kitna hai. Okay, so with a koto ache mare, with a box koto. So shegulu ubra ita to dekhte pari. So you can do that also. You can also, you can do using your sensor, which is because a lot of sensors are there, you know. So using that, you know, you can create also DSM. This is surface model. Surface model means one thing is DEM. Okay. DEM. This is the animation model. There is a paid on it. There is a building on it. So it becomes like that. So you have a DSM like that. Okay. So DSM can also be created. DEM can also be created. And of course, you can also create a land use, land cover map. Very simple thing. Okay. Everybody is doing it. So, like that, you can do that. Coming to one more very important area, and that is creating wave resistance, that is called light, light detection and wave. What is happening here? That you are using actually this lighter, okay? Lighter, and you are using these different kinds of waves, what we call the laser waves, like this is the other one. That is laser. So laser, it is actually throwing laser, you know, ring system is there. So you can you can show this laser, you know, say 70, 80,000 laser in one square each area, and all the rays will come back to you. And your system lighter, whether it is a ground based lighter or clear based lighter, clear based after the radar you suspect, after the drone you suspect, immediately capture the information on return and convert it into distance. Once you have a distance, you, know, you can get a 3D view. Okay. So once you get a 3D view, something like that. Oh, this is what you like. This is a normal color photograph. Okay. Now I'm going to walk on the entire area with lighter, where I'm going to use laser to find out what is the terrain complexity of this area. Can I do it? Yes, I can do it. Okay. This is by ladder. So here roads are also shown. Some tracks are also shown. You can see that the first order, first order streams are also shown. Second order is also there. Third order is a fourth order like that. So what you have here that you, whatever you don't see, you are able to see. So therefore you are able to the market happened so clearly, and this is slider like is actually a very important thing in our So, this is the market. Now, this is one more scenario landslide. So, landslide ko bata kane ke liye, find out the landslide where it is in the forested area like North Bengal, Korea, ya upper North East area, it is very difficult to come. Because there is a lot of deep crack in here. It is called smaller, big landslide, it is not this under the state of it. Unless otherwise you go to the ground and see it. But LIDAR has the capability to visualize and detect all these things very clearly. For example, this is the road. This is a road, this is a river, this is a area, okay? And then one more is here, and then oh, I don't know whether this area is having any kind of landslide or not. But then if I just look at the lighter data, I find that it's quite a landslide. It's called this river, which is a massive one. So, what do you get? You get a real Picture, two picture of the area, what is the magnitude of that slide in the area? Like that. So that is the magnitude of the spider. You can also do more of a geomorphic studies. You have to study something on the water you are doing and you set by the water and you can get a photograph. You can find out so many things like that. Can be that slide is also there, shadow that slides are also there, and the shadows are there, all these things. But then, if we use instead of this the rider, so I guess you all information about this very clearly. See that, which is not this or that. 
So, this is a technological duty of this. A call research point. Two of our student professors there, our student over there, they can do it here. So, this is the amnesty work of the person. His name was Superman. So, we are supposed to find out from where the rock falls is there. Rock falls is there. This is called Ankara. This is that. This might be the rock that is connected to the rock. And this is originally a rock. Okay, now, as we call it, you know, uh, this is all the things that we see, this is the best solid things here. And then, the people of those countries and other countries, they go to the rock climbing. So, while doing it, say 800 meters, 800 meters. So, when they go for the rock climbing, you know, periodically, fragments of rocks, they eat the rock climbing. And many people die. The forest department there, they thought, we have to find out about all the videos. And which are the one and only ones that are standing in the middle of the area? Only just the city of the city. So, this Roger Putman is from our Korean University, the other people that are asking. And I said, hey, I'm going to take care of it. This is just a little bit of a little bit. So, you are supposed to do that. So, what he is doing, he was doing a few things like this. Instead of just trying to find out that going up there and taking photographs, taking help from 20 of his climbers. So he has a chance, they are also doing it. And then what he is doing, he is also using one lighter. Lighter will be each and everywhere, some, some kind of variation is there that has come. So all the pictures taken by the climbers, okay, rock climbers, plus the lighter, and different that geological formation they have now, they have passed it up in the computer. It has both gone to the supercomputer, they have analyzed it, they have come out with a map, and that map is this one. This is the geological map. So now the forest department is over there. Many people will go to the other areas, which is a sensitive area, so they go for a serious area. So this map has gone to the now, one more thing, the mobile feature is yes. on the mobile the mobile is on the and that is called the mobile yes. So, the mobile yes are different kinds. You can use tablets or sometimes. So, you can collect all the information, in situ information from the ground. There is something you can do using, you can recall information or other data which is available in the cloud. Okay, straight away you can download it here, analyze it in the ground. And you are you are converting more data, which is collected from the ground, and, and also actually tagging it on the satellite in more data. So you know that what kind of data is there. So once you have this, you are doing everything in the ground. So something you do in the lab, you will come back for the refinement of this. So this is the kind of things you are doing here. A lot of things are being done here. Geographical area, geospatial area, 2021 is checked out there. Right? Okay. Anyone can keep going. Now, this is another example. I'm going to get a silly position. What do you think is it a hobby? It's about a map with compelling connection. It's a bunch of I'm going to get a paper map. Paper map. So, paper map is the key, why key you have a fixed way of option. You can go there, now there, okay. So, you can go there, you can go there, you can go there, and you can go there, you can go there, you can go there, shut up the number five, everything is there. But then, suppose, if you have a map which is actually can, can work as a story, okay, means that up there, if you have a digital system like this, or a uh, tablet, you have, Map me up to the other data that was a video we are there, what a picture will come to it, then what were at the shop, medical shop, what are the medicines available there, what not, absolutely. So that is all your map creating complex connections. So you are also doing like that. So digital map having more becoming interactive. So it is all interactive. Anytime you can call it, we call it interactive. So yeah, probably that's all. Then come smart mapping. Smart mapping you can keep you have data, okay? Best quality data. And you have many data available in the cloud. 
the calling it, you have all the information available with respect to the, say, uh, say, the information of that particular area, you want to create a high resolution, say, uh, control map in that area, say, 0.5 meter resolution. Yeah. So, smart map is something like that, using data reference system. So, you are doing all this. Here, AI is also working. Making system is also working, which is given by AI, and then you are creating a visualization. So, you can create a lot of things here. Then, one more thing, which is already happening here retail delivery optimization. All this done, all the people are doing it. Amazon, optimize it further, which is the nearest way, nearest path to reach that destination. What are the things that you need to do? What you need to provide them for them? To stop by things in the shops or supermarket like that. So this type of thing is done. Where the houses are there, where you need to get the neighbor, all these things. One more thing is the parking capacity. He said, when I go to Delano area, there is no parking. So what do you do? You have to wander around the area to find the parking area and you become disgusted and come back. No, you have sensor, something like that, which is connected to your Wi-Fi. And that Wi-Fi is further connected to your GI system. Okay. And while moving itself in the vehicle, you know which other area is super saturated, like this. Super saturated. And not much saturated in this area. These are open areas, still vehicles that have power here. Then you have a choice that if you want to go to this area, which is the nearest where you can power and power I will not go to this area. Okay, so this is what parking capacity. This is one of the things coming in. Then electricity usage. Okay, monetary usage. What do you know? How much electricity? Where it is wrong? Who are they? You think how many? Everything is coming into the future side. Then the city utilization. So you can go around the places. Again, this is the kind of story map. Like each piece to be back, you can see it works like that. So it is like that. Then one more thing is coming is here that if you want to make something like a smart city, for example, the smart city of Yamanako, you want to make different plans and what is really suitable for that. So we have an option, a digital option. So I can create a 4D GIS, 4D means that one is your X, Y, and Z that is more or less. Is that x, y, x, y, and z is y, and the four component d is your time. So, time it depends after how many days, how many days, okay, in a period of time. So, for a year or a month or a while, or a minute. So, the four d number is to consider the number of days you need to go. Now, how is it done here? There is one function. Now, if you are not satisfied with this, it counts as well. We go for this challenge. Okay, he is not all this area. He's trying to remove it, or he's trying to change it in a suitable way, like this, right? And then again, he thinks that after discussion with people who are in the different areas, it is not that much useful for them. So what we do? We follow the change. So same area where it, now we have. And the residential area has come up, you have a supermarket or waterway maybe, you have a parking lot over here, more houses are over here, and then they are able to estimate the people over here. Okay, so this is this is all one of the issues that have to be here. So then we have also tried to remove this area, like this, and convert it into the company. Because the areas you have are very important. So, the last of the cities now are going to be here, and also other places are also here, they feel each other all this thing. So, this kind of thing can be done here. This is one of them. Then comes a precision agriculture. Now, precision agriculture means that you are using high tech things to optimize your production. And to do that, how much water is required actually for irrigation problems you have to decide. Your system over the side, and then how how much yield should be there, and how to increase the yield productivity of that particular area. So, integrated GIS mapping can be done here, and how much return should be there means your income. Okay, so this is called smart mapping. Smart mapping 
Those plants or those plants, those are under stress. Maybe from water stress, maybe some insecticide is required in this area. What do you need? Like that. Then different things, you know, that you have GPS also, which is your super area, all these things are there. So coming together, you know, just joining all the things together, you are getting like that. That you are also trying to find out the, the way of. So optimizing the stock like that. This is one more beauty, which is now coming into the of auto rectification. Now auto means auto rectification is an automatic your where everything is done in such a way that it is, it is as good as a map. But then it shows other features of the map. Okay, the maps. So you are rectifying it based on starting points, which is already a pixel range. So each pixel is given certain x, y, z value. Also, it has to give it four days. So once you have that, you can try it at the time. So we are forming it, we are reforming it, and it's creating a map, which is actually true to the condition of the map. So this is the form to that one. And this is the same two different forms. This is all kind of picture. So this is the whole set of like that. Now we see that. One more. So, this is the screen. Just you see that in the indoor of the Then, IOP, I was telling you, internet of things. These days, you know, all the chats are using different methods. You will go out there and go out there and go out there and go but they can also find store points. If that is also hooked up with some uh, uh, say Wi-Fi and goes to the yes, they can mount it with the area so the room can be mounted there. And also you can give the health features of the health condition of the people, anything you can do. So the market is also great. And you can also move to different areas like that. But I can't believe it can also be like a subway very easily. So this is all happening on the way And then artificial images. Artificial images are video images coming out. Now, now in our time, it was not that much. Now it is very much there. The time will come that many things will be done with artificial images. So you will have to worry much. Then survey. Survey is one of the very important things that we call the autonomous survey. So the cleaning model, using your say, for example, room. And after that, some points are there, you think that you are deforming it, and then you are also trying to map this entire area and reach something more like that, creating a map like that. So, very So, this kind of thing is necessary for the installation and the geomagistry of the other system. Now, coming to this, you know, that how much potential is the market is an algorithm of which area you want to be and get it out of for students, this is very important. That IAP, Internet of Things, makes that way out of the data server. And other things are also, the market is 55 million. 55 million. And, and then it was 9 billion in 2017. So it is the exponential growth here. And also, dollar, nearly 15 trillion aggregate IP investment up to 2000. If you just consider this fact, then you know that only the government is showing your hand with this, like your GSP technology. What kind of other things are you giving me a secret? You can also go to the information technology. So there is a great time there for the 
young generation for the north. In spite of the COVID and other problems, our lifestyle has changed a little bit, but our aim and ambition is always uh, like that. So, market growth is about market growth is just a few hundred and twenty in the last year. So we have one point three billion in industry. Uh, Okay. And then this is GPS because I wanted to look at it just about uh, about this thing about the this is uh why is also I mean it's a social big also like this for the five hundred billion for the office over there and you can collect this in this uh yeah so five hundred billion dollars. So this is the kind of thing it is so we and the single lining that I why I wanted to tell you here that yoga focus. They constitute 35% per annum of the job. The the and then 22% that was there in 2020. There is a little bit of that. That's a little bit of that. But there is a lot of things. Cartographers and photographers in the world are the chances of saying, I don't know what I want to talk about. So, we have to review it. We give it now. So, so that I think can be very important. Last one that I want to tell that now just to feel that he has a lot of outside of our view that it is a lot of some other kind. And then we are going to show you that I can ask. So the last time is again one of the law. Now if he has created the map of Mars, previously I was many uh, many uh, attempts that have been made to all these areas where like Viking was there, also Hitchhike was there, Curiosity was there, Wicked was there. So what they did, you know, they just move around this and then scan the area that they created of this particular planet. Now, what happened here? That planet was something like that. So, ultimately, when you have immense data already available, you can extrapolate that using that what you have done in so that thing has to be indicated here to find out the thing, how the terrain of that situation is there. This is where the terrain of the situation is there. Now the thing is that you want to show that say for example, this is a credit How much bank is there, how much wealth is there, how much heat is there. Okay, so that you can calculate because you have all the information now. So suppose if I do it here, okay, see that. I can say that 6.47 kilometer in the bar area. So the right big one. Then this 6.48, this one, this side. X, Y, and that is your 411.67 meter. This is almost half a kilometer there. Like that. And you can show it here in the form of terrain also. See the terrain complexity here a bit. That's showing you. Uh, no radius, here also. So, suppose if I take this area, it comes out, and if we convert it into this one, like this, then I find that this is the highest area, okay, this one is over here, going down a little bit from here, then again coming a small tattoo, so the pattern will be this area, and ultimately you get all the very good information about the landform. So landform analysis will be there. However, not just because it is a little bit. So these are certain challenges I want to do. Conclusion is that that the days are there, the jobs are there, technology is possible, and you can do anything you see for the and therefore, yeah, well, I lastly show you this event. Enjoy. Take a seat. Let's see what's going on. Let's see. You must have nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. এনেছিলাম <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
a busy schedule i i could not see all the lecture of the all these persons but the lecture of dr kunal kumar das was observed by me and it was the first time when uh, i was spell bound to it uh, and and i was interested with the remote sensing and gis and really then i approached to uh, dr das how we can expand this uh, actually study in our college and dr das was the person who actually promoted our college in many way because whenever i was in uh, dehradun in indian institute of remote sensing uh, he invited me in his home and also shared so many things and in getting chance and uh, and also all the inspiration given by him me him for me and not only that and i want to share one thing to share Uh, uh not only by myself one of another uh, faculty of our department has got the same training nnrms training from indian institute of remote sensing uh, mr uh, dipankar saha and he is uh, he just completed two days before and given the exam i think he he will must pass this exam but it was online and uh, i am really uh, thankful and from the fraternity of the kuch bihar college as well as the department of P, uh, pg department of geography uj department of geography and geoinformatics sir and dr dash was inspiration for initiating the geoinformatics in our department and sir you are you will be very very uh, much glad to know that we have initiated one certificate pro program and another diploma program in geoinformatics in our college under the umbrella umbrella of department of geography and really sir i have no question but i have no what to actually uh, acknowledge you <laughs> thank you very much sir thank you only one thing may i get the argus data freely uh, yes sir उंड यूरोपियन स्पेस so they are also that the i told you that the all data is interpreted there by the team you know that is the research is still like you are so there also is a statement like download data very recent data free of cost there is not a problem so you can do that so there are various sources of the digitalization of data not only download data but also related information also like yes background information like that Like the raster data, like factor data, also in some cases you can download data. So that is important. That is important. That is important. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and I must call you for that. <laughs> okay. Next, please, Shonil. Uh, just, just, just. I, I mean, after that, very much. Hello, sir. Hi, hello, sir. I mean, Doctor Dasher, what about you? खुब भलो छे 
बसे आश्वास
মনে করুন বাইরে তোমার একটা আগুন লেগে গেল জঙ্গলের মধ্যে তো নেচারটা ওই জায়গাটা তো খারাপ হয়ে গেল ওরা কিছু ফেলে না না তখন আমাকে যে চিন্তা করতে হবে এই প্রজেক্টটা এখানে নষ্ট হয়ে গেছে
But thank actually, you, you. the uh, clock has run away. It's already 60 and a half hours over. Professor has inspired us to uh, visit uh, Mizoram. Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are winding up the uh, session and closing here. And one announcement for the participants that their uh, certificate may come in their spam mail also. So they are requested to check the spam folders in their mails also. Okay. That's all. That's all from our side. Hello. Oh, yeah. One thing I wanted to say that uh, yes, sir. Please uh, share the recorded uh, lectures of mine. Uh, maybe it is in YouTube. Okay, so that I can uh, share you there with other people. Also. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. No issue. <laughs> I shall okay. send you. Okay. <laughs> okay, sir. Obviously, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So have a nice day. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, thank you, sir. सुस्त था कौन? दीर्घ दिन सुस्त था कौन सर? थैंक यू